right, so uh, we're going to call this meeting to order at 6.01 p.m., a special meeting of the Board of Directors. Um, today is Monday, June 26, 2017, located in the Community Room 970 Embarcadero Del Mar. And I'll announce that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, Secretary Brent, if you can take the roll. Director Bertrand, present. Director Jordan. Hello. Director Brandt, I'm present. Director Freeman. Present. Director Hedges. Director Geis. Present. Director Thurlow. Here. All right, we have a quorum. Uh, Director Hedges couldn't join us tonight. Uh, so we'll look forward to seeing them soon. Um, and now moving on to section two, discussion and action items. Uh, tonight we are reviewing and hopefully adopting a preliminary budget for fiscal year 2017-18. <clears throat> the budget ad hoc committee recommends accepting the preliminary budget for fiscal year 2017-18 as presented while retaining the board of directors right to incorporate subsequent modifications made by the board. Um, and the final budget will be adopted by the board at the board meeting on July 26, 2017. Per the law, um, we have to adopt a preliminary budget before July 1st, um, but after that we can adopt our final budget. And since we have put together this agenda, those of us who are actually on the committee have thought of a few things we might want to change in the, um, in the preliminary budget that we've recommended. Uh, so we look forward to going through it. Um, Bob, would you perhaps want to give a little rundown on it? Well, I guess the first thing to start with is um, we had the opportunity, Ethan and I were um, setting up in the auditor controller's office for us to have access to FIN and stuff, and we were sort of scheduled to meet, so we kind of took over the little conference room at the front, and I was explaining to Ethan the chart of accounts, and just so happened the assistant auditor controller walked in. I said, God, just the person we need, and she you know, called up the financial system and I said, hey, could you find us a, bu a you know, budget document that, you know, is loaded in the FIN that's kind of like we are. And so she pulled up the LabCo budget, downloaded it. We kind of took their chart of accounts and stripped it around and added and deleted and went to the chart of accounts. And I think we had the structure done within about 45 minutes and then it provided us a really good opportunity for Ethan and I to just discuss some of the numbers that he had already discussed with Spencer. We plugged numbers into the report. Um, then the, the auditor walked in and he had, had been having a discussion, a little discussion with me about execution of the lease and how we should record the rent and make sure that the rent got recorded. So he helped us set up that account and Ethan and I got out of there in about an hour. <laughs> and so I go, that's the fastest budget I have ever done in my life. <laughs> because, you know, the county budget takes, that takes six months for them to do that. And I've done other special district budgets and assisted them. And, uh, you know, for us to get started like this, because, it, because we don't have a lot of money, but to get the structure started, I think it really worked. And I can thank them. The auditor. I told them they already made your report. So, <laughs> um, with that, let me just try to explain a couple of things on here. <clears throat> First, you know, when you adopt a budget, you start with sources of funds and you start with uses of funds. And typically, your sources of funds are revenues. You know, and there's about seven object levels worth of revenues. And I'll, and I'll explain that in a minute. On the expenditure side your object levels, your use of funds are basically <coughs> salaries and benefits, services and supplies and other charges. If you look in the, um, the, the code, there's a certain, those categories are in the code, but they also have like maintenance and operations in the code. But maintenance and operations is in the code because that's geared towards an enterprise district. That's what you would find there. And we are a governmental district. The other two things that you normally find in a, in a budget, and we haven't progressed to this, is if you have multiple funds, you will have sources of funds that are operating transfers between funds, and same on the use side, you'll have operating transfers between funds, and since we're one fund, we don't have those. Then the other thing you'll start to see is at the bottom of here, on the, on the use of funds, we have an increase the fund balance. So if during a budget process you wanted to say, we're going to increase our um, contingency 
by $5,000, that would become a use of funds. Now, here, down here, it says residual fund balance increase, decrease. You could also have that same account on the top as a source of funds, and that would be a decrease in fund balance. So if you were going to use your fund balance from the prior year or an account, that would become a budgetary account up, up top. At the bottom, you have a net financial impact, and normally that net financial impact, if everything occurred during the year, it would end up in an account called unassigned fund balance. One more thing to just explain a little bit between the code and that current level of budgeting is the code's a little bit out of date, but that's because the Government Accounting Standards Board is always changing things faster than you can adapt the code to the budget. It's very difficult to do that. So they have a couple of confusing terms in here, like they say you can have a, a contingency a, a contingency reserve fund. Well, reserve is an out archaic term, and a, a contingency is not, and they have new definitions called restricted fund balance, committed fund balance, assigned fund balance, and unassigned. Now, I'll just give you, a, when you want to restrict something, let's say we had an agreement with the university that said you can only use this money for X. So that would be a legal restriction on that money, and if we didn't budget it in that year, we we could restrict it. If if it was just an agreement with between the board that we want to commit money to some future project, then that is a commitment, and the code's right on that. To get rid of that commitment, you have to establish it, and then to undo the commitment, you have to have a major super majority vote to to use it, and it's the same with the contingency account. Um, so that's, I guess, the basic way this works. When we finally adopt a budget, there'll be one additional schedule to this that'll sit on top of this, and that will be a schedule of what the fund balance is. And if you have various accounts and fund balance, it'll be, it'll be a lead schedule to this document. If, instead of having at the bottom this 4,500, we'll plug in the top, and if, the, if your increase or decrease, it'll also plug into that schedule, and that's the basic document. They also generally like you to have, this is, you know, through the uh, state controller standards, the one year, the prior year actual, sometimes they put in two years prior year actuals, what your adopted budget is, your estimated actual, and then your fiscal year recommended budget, and then your final adopted budget. And when you're doing analysis of a preliminary budget, you normally have a column that says, well, what's the difference between last year's adopted budget and this year's adopted budget? So that you can do an analysis of what changed from the year, one year to the next. Although that column might, you might not want because if you want to do a zero-based budget every year and start over, you wouldn't want to be saying, well, what did we do last year? So that's the basic way this structure is set up. Anybody got any questions or? Well, the first thing that I would say is that um, one of the things that the committee um, has realized kind of subsequently that needs to be uh, edited in this recommended budget is carrying over the $4,500 that's in 2016-2017 estimated actuals uh, into uh, the source of funds for 2017-2018 uh, um, because those are all reflections of donations that we anticipate flowing through our accounts. And right now they're just kind of sitting there on the bottom. And so I think we are gonna try to find a way to get these to go and add to this, this number, or right here, 31,000, which if is we, the total we would, source of funds. If we were going to um, use that as a source of funds in next year's budget, because it's already going to be in fund balance. If you were going to use it, you would put it up at the top as a source of funds. But if you just want to leave it as unassigned residual fund balance, that second schedule that we add here will reflect that. Fantastic. Meaning it'll already be an unassigned fund balance. So it'll be a pot that's available. So then budget that outside this budget process would take a super majority. Sorry, one more time. The, this isn't my strong suit, but I really want to understand what's yep. going on. Um, 
Okay, so we're talking about this column right here and this little area. So what is happening with this one more this time? This one right there. Okay. On the bottom. So right one now that we'll we'll get into in a minute like uh, what makes up the content of this balance, but what the question was was we have it listed just for 2016-17 at the end of the estimated actual, um, but we don't have on this sheet any of it reflected in yes, carrying well. over to okay. fiscal year 17-18, which uh, is going to happen. Okay. Um, so then we would want that to be in this column too. Right? Uh, yes, but what it'll it'll be in the an updated sheet that we have, but for now we're leaving it down there so that it's unassigned. What, what I would suggest is that we put the lead schedule just below this schedule so that you read this 4500 where it goes and and then then you can see how that change in fund balance would work. And I was trying to do that over the phone with you guys, but I knew I was um, it's all good. Yeah. So, so, so I call this, I call the bottom thing schedule one and this schedule two because schedule one's a lead to this and I can help so this for the final one. budget put that together. Yep. Uh, Director Phillip? So why don't you have a carryover line? The 4500 is really a carryover of fund balance, meaning that you wouldn't put it in your budget next year yeah so you could put it in the budget you could appropriate this for next year and put a line in here that says residual fund balance increase or decrease if you wanted to put that up as a source and put a decrease in fund balance you could put the forty five hundred dollars up here and it'd be available for appropriation so if you guys want to do that on the face that's the that's an easy thing to do and maybe but maybe then what's going to happen is your bottom line is going to increase to ninety five hundred and the question is, is that at the end of the year, if everything goes right, it'll all end up in a unassigned. So if you want a policy, if we want a policy to always re-budget unassigned fund balance, we can do that. And if it's clearer to the board, that's what, what happens if we don't re-budget the unassigned fund balance? It'll just sit in unassigned fund balance. Wait, wait, so where Which is the same as it just being completely unrestricted discretionary money, right? So what is that called? And, and okay. one, one thing I'll mention real quick, we are going to go... Yeah, I, I, I kind of... dictionary. <laughs> no problem. Okay, uh, but we are going to go through all of the um, costs, and at that time we might actually look at, oh, we have this 4,500 that should be allocated. Yeah. So perhaps uh, we can start that now. So first I'll go over uh, what we have listed under source of funds. Um, for both the 2016-2017 fiscal year estimated actual and 2017-18 fiscal year recommended budget. So starting with the 16-17 estimated actual, um, with line 4840, we have $3,000 um, for other governmental agencies. That's the $3,000 that Supervisor Hartman is transferring over to our account before the end of the fiscal year. The request has been sent in. Um, the transfer has been made to the Auditor Controller's Office. They're still just finalizing everything. But that will be uh, officially in the account by the close of this fiscal year. So that's all that's listed for other governmental agencies in that side of the budget. Um, going down to miscellaneous revenue in line 5895, other donations, you'll see $1,500. That is assuming um, a donation from Director Geis and uh, a uh, <laughs> donation from the Isla Vista Community Development Corporation of $500. Uh, so we have that all there for, uh, for this 1617 estimated actual. So that's all money that we anticipate to be in the bank before the close of this fiscal year. And then you'll see for the total of the source of funds there, that's $4,500. Uh, moving over to the 1718 fiscal year recommended budget um, for other governmental, you'll see a huge increase to $31,000. What this is, is it's projecting three different um, sources. First, the $9,000 um, amount of money from the County of Santa Barbara for office space um, in exchange for services provided. Uh, second, $2,000 being transferred from the third district supervisor's office for this next fiscal year. And then third, a projected $20,000 um, grant from UCSB um, for administrative 
um, overhead to provide services. Uh, as you know, the request that I made was for 15%. However, since then, we uh, were successful with getting the $9,000 from the county. Um, and in that initial ask of 15%, uh, office space was a big variable. So we brought it down in this projection to $20,000 for 10%. Um, and then that totaling for a total of $31,000 uh, for that source of funds. Um, any questions on that part or comments? Director Freeman? And so in the, the, the 20000 from the university will go to our accounts, like we will go into our accounts and then be spent from our accounts? My understanding in all of our discussions has been just for this administrative, they were talking about um, giving us some money to operate with for those specific tasks, not for any services. Director Thurlow, uh, anything to add on that? Uh, I, I think it's unclear at this point. Okay. It's unclear because it's going to be dictated by, to a certain extent, by what appropriately can come out of a region's fund and go into a CSD fund versus whether it goes from a region's fund to pay for a CSD expense. So I, it's, it's not clear to me if, if a system has been set up to make a direct payment to the CSD. So, sorry, just to clarify, so it's like paying a check versus paying off an invoice? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so sure. I, 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 have a I, th I think in the discussion with the budget committee, we've kind of left that open to say it would be nice in the long term if that grant was reflected on the books of the CSD in the long term. However, it doesn't. It could probably let's say let's say they incurred an expense, we incurred an expense, and they paid it on our behalf. We could do a contribution to other governments and put that expense and report it on our books. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be in our bank account for us to record it on the books. It's kind of similar to the $9,000 that Sorry. we're doing with the county of uh, trading services, but we want that $9,000 from the county to be on the county's books and we want it to be on our books. So I think we can. We've kind of opened that up and know that there's for the future, but that's why it's not in this budget to put 180,000 in there. And Director Phil, with that in mind, are you comfortable with having that projection as listed in this budget? Yeah, I think that's a, I think it's a safe. I, I don't think there's been a total uh, uh, dismissal of 15%, but I think 10% is a good conservative way to go. Uh, Director Freeman? Um, so you were saying that um, even for the money that doesn't flow through us, that um, you have, the budget committee has been leaning towards putting it on the budget? I think it depends on the nature of the transaction. You would look towards okay. the GASB regulations and the government accounting standards and say, was well, that really the, uh, uh, you know, belong on the books of the IBCSD? And it probably depends on that final nature of the transaction. You know, they could grant the money to us and it could all flow through our books and we pay them back or pay for the services. Or, depending on the regions, they might want to keep that in their control and say, well, we're going to pay that money too for the community policing program on your behalf. You're entering into a contract for community policing and we could put that transaction on our books with the revenue and expense. Well, I'm focused on the administrative overhead, so like the, the, the 20,000. So, so even, 20, even if they pay invoices for us, we are currently leaning towards putting it on well, our... I think for the 20,000, we're going to pay our own invoices with it. We're going to use the 20,000. The 20,000 is going to flow through us and the cash. It, hopefully. But that's maybe. not what I think we're, we're just hearing. He was said maybe, basically. Yeah, maybe. We yeah. don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know. In, not, in not any event, I think it'll be good that for sure. It, so. Yeah, yeah. if they're going to go in and pay our insurance bill, you know, we'd put that on our books. So we would, okay, so then the, the, the one question that I then have is that, um, and, and one of the, part of the motivation behind this is that it's interesting to actually show that, like, look, we've been doing things, people have been giving us money for things, we've been spending on it. Um, the university spent $4,500 on an internship program for us. Is that something that we would want to reflect on our budget? 
So we had that discussion on Friday when we were at the auditor's office, and we did not want to put that in um, over the thought of really making it clear that these interns are not employees of the district. Cool. Uh, that was the discussion that we had then, though. We're certainly open to hearing other ideas. Um, no, I, I think to be clear, and in answer to your question, Bob, the real answer to this will be after we have our first outside auditor come in <laughs> and look at what we're doing, and that person will say, here's really how you should be doing this. Well, the outside auditor, when he comes in, he, 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 he or she, when the outside audit firm comes in, you know, their responsibility is to give us an opinion on our financial statements. And our financial statements, wherever we project our financial statements, that's a projection made by management. So management will be, we as the board of directors will be making that first choice. We're gonna have to make those judgment decisions. They can come in and look at our judgment decisions and say, are our financial statements materially stated? They could look at the internship program and say, oh, that, that's a transaction that belongs on your books. I, I doubt, I don't see many instances, but remember, in the long run, the financial statements of the district and the financial transactions of the district are our responsibility, not our independent auditors, but we sure want them looking over our shoulder independently. And Jonathan, I saw you had your hand up. You know the um, UCSP to IBRPD donation for competing grade awards? I don't, but I don't think it flows through IBRPD. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. I'm pretty sure it does. Well, you probably know better than yeah. because you, have, you uh, yeah. Um, and in fact, there's also, there's funding that flows over to IBRPD, which may be connected to um, graffiti abatement, where the university pays a grant to IBRPD, and IBRPD gives half of it to, um, I believe it's the Teen Center. Teen Center. Yeah. Um, and even though it's right. set it's forth beforehand that only half the money is IBRPD's, all of it goes to IBRPD's account. So. But that's good to know, because that, what that tells us is there's a precedent. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. great question. Director Brown? I just had one more question, not very much related to this, but you were mentioning the, um, the $3,000 from the third district office, and you were saying it's gonna get in by the end of this current fiscal year. Yes. So, along with um, the $1,500 in donations. The transaction is sitting in the auditor's office, the CEO process the side that's mm -hmm. delivering it to us. And when they sent me up as a FIN user, they're setting I and Ethan up, but if I get set up first, I'm gonna accept that transaction tomorrow and bring okay, it into right. our treasury. Okay, never mind, I'm, not, then, I'm remembering now. Okay, and so then Ethan and I, after this meeting, he's set up with deposit tickets and bank deposit tickets, and I'm being set up on the other side to do what they call deposit journal entries, which identify a deposit. We're gonna use my check today as the test <laughs> he's, I'm going to write him a check. He's going to get. He's going to write the, the district a check tomorrow. <laughs> write the district a check. Ethan's going to do the bank deposit tomorrow before eleven. Hopefully, we're going to do the deposit ticket to the treasury, and he's going to send that by email um, scan over to the treasurer, who will record that. That then sits in the auditor's office as an unidentified deposit. Whereas I'll go in and initiate the transaction and say, here is the transaction that was recorded and put it in the right accounts. And so the accounts on the, the ledger, I'm gonna put it in this account, other donations, and I'll put the description on it and stuff. Yeah. But that makes sense. So we're kind of kicking off that deposit process with these two transactions. And this is all just for the context of why those numbers are in that line, yeah. just for anyone who's wondering. Um, so any other uh, questions on source of funds or comments before we move on to use of funds? And obviously we can come back. Any uh, questions from the public before we move forward to use of funds? No? All right. Um, so for this first part, uh, salaries and employee benefits, at one point when we started, we just completely wiped out that section, but then we thought it may be good to just show for uh, people who may look at this with little context of the district um, to, to just see that while uh, we're not allocating any funds there, um, it still is something that we have in mind, um, or vice versa, just so that people 
don't think that there's something missing from this budget. Um, so with that in mind, we kept the commissioner director slash trustee line um, and show the public that we are not being paid. Um, and then regular salaries, none exist. So that part is uh, simple. Is there any comments on whether or not you'd like to see those stay in? Everyone's happy I'm, with I'm that right keep, now? I'm for keeping it. Cool. Okay. Uh, and now uh, to the services and supplies for line 7324, audit and accounting fees, $500. That's uh, based on the agreement that uh, me and Spencer are signing to enter into, uh, well, just signed to enter into. Director Phillips? Yeah. Um, under 61118 of the government code, which you passed out, it says board of directors shall provide for regular audits on the district's account and record pursuant to section 26909. Does that call for an annual audit? And that if it does, should there be money in there? I mean, for sure, we're going to have to pay for an audit. Right. And Director Gunn is actually... We were hoping to try and get a pro bono <laughs> for the first year, but it only is going to be an audit at $4,500 worth of donations, but they would have to set up the structure of the report for the future, or we as the directors would have actually, to set that's, up. That's, so, that's so a great idea. So I, all they're going to have to do is audit $4,500, and if we are responsible as management for putting together what a future report would look right, like. Right. I was hoping we could get somebody to do you know it. Actually, program. that's a great idea, and I think I can find somebody that will do that. But that's but you also trigger the idea that we need to do an audit for sixteen seventeen. We need to do an audit for sixteen seventeen, and then we have to do one for seventeen and eighteen. And you're right, we didn't put any money in for the seventeen eighteen audit. So good point. We should. Well, think about that. I think, well, I, I think that you. Mm. Go ahead. No, you first. No, I, I think there's a great chance that we could get uh, somebody to do it pro bono. And do you think for the second year, too? I don't know, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Because I know. I mean, I'm already thinking of a couple people that would probably do it for us. Awesome. And in our discussions, we, um, we didn't really talk about anything for 16, 17 here. We were thinking. Oh, 17, I was thinking 16, 17. Oh, you, okay. Okay. Thinking 17, Our minds are in yeah, two different places, 17, though, so 18, close yeah. together. Um, okay. I, at minimum, if we wanted to put an amount in for 17, 18, I would put in $1,500. Um, I've seen audits done for that or cheaper for this size of an organization. Right. It's all a managed, it's all an element of risk for the firm that does it. It's all, it's all risk. And putting in fifteen hundred on top of the five hundred in that line, yeah. or for a total, of it would be it would be probably fifty. Well, you could probably so get away with thousand dollars if we yeah. if we only put a thousand, we'd probably get it done for a thousand. Yeah, get the audit done for a thousand, or yeah. the total in that line item is a thousand. Get the audit done. For a thousand. So for a total of fifteen hundred, yeah. one thousand dollars plus the five hundred agreement yeah. we're in now. There's, there's a lot that goes into a professional audit firm to go in and take the responsibility to do all the problems. This is two years ago. The problem is always the first year. Because this one's yeah. zero. The first year they do it, we're looking at 17. Yeah. Now, the first year there's nothing much to audit, but then as you said, they're going to have to set up a report and they're going to have to, and they're going to look at it. It's audit. as good as the report that we do. If we make really good reports and their audit is simple, then, then it won't cost us as much. So, so then, what is the process that we should begin to do an ought to retain an auditor to do sixteen seventeen? We can't talk about that process. We can only talk about how much it must might cost. Um, All right, but uh, I'll I would argue that because you passed out government code sixty one 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 eight it's now part of the public record that we yeah. are being informed that the board of directors should provide for regular audits but if you want to reschedule that i'm happy to do that I, i'd prefer to okay. thank you um but as far as so now we have one thousand dollars on top of that for a total of fifteen hundred for seventeen eighteen so so remember in seventeen eighteen is when you'd incur the audit fee for 1617. 
Hmm. So you pay the fee the year before, so then does that... Right. So the audit the takes year place after. after the completion of the year? Yes. So okay. then we're paying for 60 days. It has to be done within a year, but this piece we should get it done within 60 days. Okay. So <laughs> Wait, so then with that in mind, we're, we have $1,500 there for the accounting and auditing provided yeah. by Auditor Controller's Office and for auditing this 1617. Year, but which we year. hope to get pro bono. Yes. Okay. Well, then I think it's very responsible for us to assume that if we don't, it'll be around one thousand. I'm happy with fifteen hundred for that item. So, um, I have a couple questions. So number, sorry, do you mind if I ask a couple? No, please. Okay. Do. So number one, if we don't use that fifteen hundred dollars and get, do you get it pro bono? Does that just go into like some unallocated area? Yeah, it goes into fund balance. Okay. And then where would fund balance be reflected in here? Like that four thousand five hundred dollars. Where would that be reflected? Like where would I be able to see that? This five thousand dollars. Like the the forty five hundred dollars, like that that was supposed to be in that. That's going to be in Schedule One that we're going to put right below this. Which so really, in a budget document, is Schedule One, which sits on top of this. Okay, so then, where would though, like, let's say if we didn't use that fifteen hundred dollars, where would it be reflected within this document that we had fifteen hundred dollars available? Because we're going to add a schedule at the. Maybe we should try and do it right now. Do you guys want to add the fund balance schedule that's clear? If we could do that, it would help me, I sure. think, a lot. Yeah, and one thing, uh, this isn't Schedule 2. So just Wait, didn't you say this? No, so this whole sheet is Schedule 1. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So that might simplify Wait, so what? Yeah, he's just saying that this is Schedule 1. <laughs> okay. Below this okay. will be a Schedule and 2. Just put a, so um, put a zero these in. individual uh, lines aren't okay. scheduled. Okay. Okay. Does that simplify kind everything? Of. Okay. And then... Here, we'll this have a visual on that. Yeah. Yeah. This will be the changes in fund balance. Okay, and then my other question is here, and this could be like really stupid, but it, uh, why would we decide to put $4,500 in 5, X amount of days before we could just move it into the other and one then, instead and of having totals, to get an audit for your fund zero dollars for it? Do you know what I'm saying? So we could like, I don't understand why we wouldn't just wait like, Couple days and then have zero dollars and not have to get the audit, right? So this is that's actually a really good question. This is that a good I, I, no, I'm glad you're bringing that up. No, uh, and then also we wouldn't have to. The third district supervisor's office um, is giving three thousand dollars to us, and um, they probably will want to get that applied yeah. to their previous years, like this. The, this well, then year's why budget. Why wouldn't they so. just want to put it on their budget too? It's complicating the whole because, thing. We could just because have zero dollars. Because we don't let them carry it over. I'm confused. The supervisor theoretically. Needs to incur that expense this this, fis this fiscal, fiscal year. year. Therefore, they give it to us this fiscal year. We got to report it. Okay, because I was going to say if it's we're pretty strict at the county by not letting people encumber unassigned over. funds and carry them over. Okay, so there's no way that we could just have a rollover, do zero dollars, and then not have to pay that fifteen hundred dollars. I didn't say there was no way. Audit. I said there's no. <laughs> well, there's still going to be money flowing through our accounts. In even if the third district doesn't get us that by the end of the fiscal year, there will still be fifteen hundred dollars. I understand the that. What I'm saying is, though, if if theoretically we were to move this past the end of the 2016-2017 fiscal year to 2017-2018, we would have zero dollars yeah. in this one, and we would That's not right. have to pay fifteen hundred dollars for an audit. No, there would not be zero dollars in that one. There'd be fifteen hundred dollars, and we still have to do an from audit. What, Bob? Can you wait a week? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, we're just saving ourselves that entire well, money that I you're going to give to us, well, right? Uh, I'm I, I, I would tell you that you. I'm very confident that we can get a program. I think that but it. we can't wait for supervisors. We, it would okay. be, I it, get it. We can't wait for the 3000 and I think it's better to... I get it. It doesn't um, want to... Particularly it's better to pro forma money. what our audit's going to look like anyways. Yeah. Okay, you're right. I just thought that we could save money. And if you think you can get it... I think we can get we it. We think we can get a pro bono. Yeah. Okay. Great point. Um, so next, moving down to 7430 memberships. Right now we have that at zero. Um, and what we're thinking about here is what CSTA membership will be. They never got back to me on the free um, proposal that we had. And their dues for an associate member, a non-voting member, are $1,231. Um, I'm going to contact them again to see if we can get a better deal on that for when we get the final budget. Um, if we want to put maybe half of that cost in there right now to as a placeholder I, I'd be happy to do that or we can leave it at zero until we figure out if it'll be 
economically viable to enter into membership. It's very hard to able to put the full amount in there. Okay. I, I mean, I think you always want to show your expenses as bad as they are going to be. And we're and that way there's no surprises or scrambling. Or okay. So 1,000. And I assume they have to join, right? I think it's prudent, yeah. 1,000 a second? $1,231. Uh, Jordan? Uh, yeah. When you're doing a budget, I would never put in at $31. I just put it in as, either put it in as $1,200 or $1,300 or put it in at $1,250. $1,250. Just, just, it's just for the sake of when you're That's reading the document. Good. If you're $31 over on the budget for that line, I didn't care. Cool. And did you have a comment or question? No. Okay. Just trying to follow along. Um, next, for office expense, we put $1,200. Um, and real quick, I'm going to pull up the financial feasibility study sheet that we were using. Um, but Bob, do you have any comments on I that I think one? we just decided that $100 a month would seem to cover, I don't know what, Jay, what you're incurring in terms of your expense to produce paper and donor and... We maybe could give us some help there, but I'm not sure how high those office expenses are. Not high. Not a hundred bucks a month or less. Less, yeah. So wait, so when, sorry, I got a question. Okay, so when we're putting fifteen hundred, moving from five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars, where are we moving this money from? Are we figuring that out right now, or you know what I'm saying? Like, so that we're going to need to. It's going to come out of that bottom line from five thousand. The more you put in, the. So the $5,000 is just probably not going to be Yeah, good. it's just we're balancing to that net financial impact. It will keep going down. Thank you. Um, so I'm still looking for a – oh, wait, here it is. So um, in Appendix A of the feasibility study uh, for annual supplies for office space, it had it at $2,000 per FTE for a base of $3,000. Um, but in our limited office capacity, we were we looked to reduce it to twelve hundred budget for it. I'm, I'm comfortable and even more comfortable after what Jay said. And this doesn't include technology. This doesn't include communications. Um, and we've heard that we're gonna uh, very uh, we're very grateful to receive assistance from the Mosher House with some equipment as well. So, anyone have any comments or, or further questions on that number? Pretty good. Okay. So that'll stay for now. Now, for copier expense, we put $2,600. And the thought here was purchasing a printer copier combo um, and then also expense for ink and toner. Um, in the feasibility study, there was $5,000 for the total item of IT internet phones. And copier, um, but we've uh, we've broken that up into some further further items. Uh, but twenty six hundred dollars was what we came up with there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Director yeah. Freeman, I'm wondering if you have any mm -hmm. insight on that. I'm actually sitting here just trying to actually calculate out, for example, how much I spent on the uh, on ink today. <laughs> My yeah. recommendation would that? be like if it would be not to purchase one, but to rent one. You can rent copiers and scanners and it's much cheaper and then they come out and replace the ink and it's like significantly less money than buying one and if it breaks then they give you another one. And I think that like the more stuff that we buy and things that we acquire then become our responsibility. And I think that especially if we don't have an office staff it's going to be a huge pain in the butt. So my recommendation would be to spend way less money than this and rent one. You can get a, yeah, at least a massive one. One of those big ones and then you just only pay for color prints. I like that. And um, the Park District has in their budget $1,631 for that. Um, and within copier expense, we are also budgeting in, um, oh, well, I guess what you were just saying, that if they did maintenance on it or like ink and stuff, then it would That's be. That's all okay. included. So I'm thinking yeah. if we, and, and like I said, the less stuff that we acquire, kind of what I'm, I'm thinking is a good plan as long as we don't have a staff and it just, it, it comes back to the J question from last week of whose responsibility is what, you know? So I think that we could kind of avoid doing that if 
possible that would be solid. Director Freeman. All right, so yeah, I was just, I was just one hundred percent verifying that, like, I because I, I was thinking about paper costs and costs that I wasn't weirdly spending a bunch of, and I'm not. It's it's this is this is cheap. Um, I agree with Natalie that from I mean printers are brutal. I mean the the, the as far as like the wear and tear and, mm -hmm. and support and everything, and like I spent a lot of time figuring out printing equipment that would essentially require me to have very little maintenance on all this stuff that I do. Um, but like. I, I'd be concerned about uh, us ending up incurring weird maintenance and everything. Um, yeah. So if if I mean if there's like an opportunity for us to utilize um, something from the university, if there's a you know, for where we need to actually make a copy with like a you know, like a uh, that that would be great. Um, otherwise, I mean as far as like these agendas, I'm I'm happy to continue printing these agendas for. Them. So. Um, we have an office space, though, wouldn't we want one? I you know, so, yeah. if we have an office space. I'd yeah, I think that it'll be good stuff. for us to at least have it, like print speak start to be done in house. I I would be much cooler if it were done in house. Yeah, than yeah. Some yeah. I, I would just I, think I just, for I just worry like at a regular meeting if we don't have enough copies of something that we can go in the other room yeah. and make the copies. It's, it's something like well, that. I mean, we don't have to think about it right now. You know, we're filling in the uh, sort of old tweaks to the budget and it would be cool if we'd be able to run next door and make copies and pass them off to everybody before the end of the meeting yeah. but we just have so yeah. little money that I'm, I'm just concerned with the idea that we end up spending you know thousand dollars on a printer and then it breaks and we have to bring in like a serviceman for like two hundred fifty dollars and we're like try trying and it's just it just starts whittling away at a little amount of money for right now it looks like it'll only be hundred and seventy five dollars to rent it for a full year and we don't have to do any maintenance on it let's just do that and then we can move that money around to something else we really want well, knowing that our district spends sixteen hundred dollars on it to lease, though, I'd like to probably be more around there. But sixteen hundred. Oh, sixteen hundred. Big, big one. Like a huge one. Theirs is pretty big. I don't we think need we need to go one. as big as theirs. Maybe we got like a tiny one that had just a little. I I'd say for now, if we go sixteen hundred or fifteen hundred, and then in the final budget, see if. Uh, well, yeah, and and again, keep in mind that with a lot of this money. You know, once it's allocated, I mean, he's talking about the admin cut. That's money that we can only use for administrative stuff. And do you just want to leave it all there? And hope we can get it cheaper. We could just do that. Just well, no, I, I think there's definitely some some merit to leasing a, a copier, and I like that idea. But I do think that we should be a little more in line with what IVRPVs. Let's cut it to 1500. fifteen hundred. Fifteen. Yeah. Director Freeman. I guess, I guess another comment to make, to make on this, as far as like. So the, the 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 tiny little printer that I'm printing these on cost me twenty eight hundred dollars. Um, the and with the goal of making of getting a printer that I could, for example, just print off thousands of sheets of paper constantly. It doesn't cost a lot. Um, if you buy a normal like laser or I mean heaven forbid like picking chair like normal like laser toner um, copy machine, you can end up spending ten fifteen cents per sheet. Um, I, I got I to get it down to like two or three cents per sheet by just like spending more on different types of technology and everything. But it's just like I like I'm. It's possible that all of this will become much more expensive if you buy a cheap copier. Why don't, like, yeah. like why, why don't we just put fifteen hundred in there and then I'm we'll go explore that. the marketplace? Yeah, exciting. Assign it to budget. Okay. So fifteen, <coughs> dollars for copier expense. All right. Now for professional and special service, we left it at zero dollars because we already have allocated in this budget um, funding for council. We already have allocated in this budget funding for accounting and county auditing. Um, we were not sure. Uh, what other professional services we may need in this coming year. Um, typically, my understanding for that would be if there was like an engineer's report or... Um, Translator? Um, what about translation services? Yeah, that could fall in there. And it wasn't that one of our goals was to uh, try and get translation services hopefully within the next year or so? My understanding was that the goal was to try to get pro bono translation services. What was that on? For the general manager? What were we? Pro, bo oh, pro bono for what? Translation. Oh, translation. Yeah. Because that is a professional service. Um, yeah. I don't know. I thought that might fall under that category. So 
like you know, we put invisible state potential pro bono money into the audit, which is obviously required. But I thought that we were trying to set that goal of getting the translation services earlier on. Than can you can you refresh me on when we were talking about that? Do you know what I'm saying? Like we put, we, George is confident that we can get a pro bono audit. Obviously, that's required. But if we are confident that we can get a pro bono language services, why wouldn't we still budget for having to pay for somebody? Do you know what I'm saying? No, I was asking, can you refresh my mind on when we talked about setting a goal of translation services? Oh, I know that from the beginning, we were talking about, I think it was like the third meeting, we brought somehow along the line, translation services came up, and we were also talking about a general manager, as far as I remember. And then somebody had talked about it. Am I wrong about that? I don't have the It's just not something that I can quickly recall, but yeah. If you don't want one, that's fine. Or if you don't think it's no, I, that's I think fine. it should but definitely be a goal. I'm concerned there. about I'm concerned about budgeting money for it, though. Director Freeman, I, I also remember this coming up, but not necessarily firmly at all. Like just I don't know. Something that just came up during conversation as far as like. Then we don't have to put firm money towards it. I just thought I'd throw it out there, and I think that we should really consider it, especially given um, the demographics of our constituents. A lot of times, in doing outreach to to a lot of communities. So what does that mean? So, I know. so, I just want to say that uh, I met with Diana about translating the website, like we had talked about in the last meeting. We talked about translation services for the agenda, and we got a semi amount it would cost. But I have something to say about that at the next agenda item, so we can put it there. Okay. So, but it's like twelve hundred dollars. For translation services? Yeah, just for like. Three pages of agendas, it, like twice a month. We like did a little like you know, outline of what you would need to translate. It's not cheap, but it's uh, it's like thirty five dollars a page. And she said that pro bono usually doesn't work too well for translation. Like they will not get it to you in the time you need to, and then you have to think about like brown acts. I'll talk about it. Well, so is there is there a certification? Do you think that they would? I don't want to get too into it. Never mind. But like, do you know what I'm saying? If they're Translated for a government agency. I don't know if there's a certificate that you would need instead of just someone who's taken Spanish for two years in high school. You know what I'm saying? It's unclear. No one really does it. Like Curahi, which is a city in LA that's like 97% Latino, does not translate anything. Really? Now the $1,200. How long of a period is that for? That was like one year. For one year. Thank you, Jeremy. I'm just wondering yeah. if it might be good to ask members of Spanish-speaking community what kind of translations services they feel like they would benefit from. I'm thinking translation of the agendas, they might feel like is pointless, but if there was a translation of meeting announcements, and if there were, a tra if there were translation devices and a translator present during the meetings, it could be that that's what they would want. And if, that, if that's the case, um, there, all, there are often volunteers, Viviana, um, I think it's Marsana from the university, often organizes translation services like that for different um, community events and um, there's often volunteers for that type of service. Yeah. I think we're kind of thinking in the same direction now because that, that's what I was thinking when you brought up translation was the live in-person translation. But, but ultimately here, just to focus it on this item, we haven't discussed it at the board. I think that perhaps we can bring this up in the next month before we adopt our final budget. With that in mind though, I'm not prepared yet to allocate funding to it. Okay, that makes sense. But is there anyone who would like to increase that professional and special service? I, 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 st I still have on the top of my mind, I would like to see a general manager stipend then, similar to what we're doing with the lawyer. But, um, you know, we can go the pro bono route. Um, but if funding permitted, I think it's still to get someone really to commit to our district for a long term without getting paid anything, um, it would not be nice to have a stipend of like $5,000 for a year. Um, but I'm, I'm not suggesting we put it in this budget. I'm just suggesting that if those grants or funding come around, I still think that's a good expenditure. I agree. I also agree. and. I don't want to get too far into it at this meeting because we're not agendized to talk about that, but I think this is something that we are going to be uh, forced to take action on pretty soon, um, the general manager situation. And so that might be a wise thing to do. So put money in the budget or to put money on the budget? To, to put money in the budget for a stipend, yes. 
I think that's a good idea too. I think it's going to be super hard to find somebody to do it for free. I think that we should, let's go through the rest of this column first and then see what our balance is and then go back and see what we have to work with. Sure. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. So now, um, down to legal fees, we have $6,000. Um, what we base that off of is, well, we have $4,000 in the base agreement, um, and that's assuming that there's not a rate change upon renegotiation at the end of the year. Um, <coughs> but now, in addition to that, we are also paying for mileage. And mileage, I, uh, I did a calculation um, based on the current IRS rate, uh, which is what we're uh, basing this off of. And a round trip from here to Upton, California is about $150 per trip. Um, so with that in mind, we did hear counsel say that um, he isn't planning on coming to every meeting after uh, this introductory phase. So if there were um, 12 meetings, that would be approximately um, $2,000. Uh, a little less uh, allocated to travel for that. What what isn't considered in that um, would be litigation. Um, that that is the the extra cost that that we are liable for. Um, however, also if if he is coming twelve times uh, per year, I'm not even clear that after this first introductory step he'll he'll be coming that often. So, any any thoughts on this, Director Freeman? Um, so I guess I, this now becomes like a very high level question for Bob. Um, is this like, a, I, I, it seems like it is, like a, a cash, not accrual? Like the fact that we've had this lawyer now for a couple meetings, we don't account for the fact that some amount of our invoices from him are going to be from this calendar year as opposed to the next one, even if we pay him on the next one? But somehow the agreement was structured. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, maybe I just The agreement that. was structured in two payments. And the the cash, though, occurs then, but the question is, is that the cash that we give them at the end of the year is for all of the work he did, including two weeks ago. So like it feels like I'm, I'm yeah. like, it's like, like my business, when I, make a, when, I, when I do accounting for it, I have to yeah. put in when yeah. the invoice comes in, not when I give them money. Yeah. So, so we haven't taken that up as a policy with our board of directors, you know, but the county's policy is, you know, we don't accrue anything greater than $5,000. Or individual. I just put the same policy in for carpentry or fire district. So as we grow as a district, worrying about that little bit of money that gets transferred between periods that you've accrued, you know, is, is pushing a fine line on the accrual basis accounting. But you have a really good point. We do want to make accruals when they're material to our financial position. It's not like we didn't accrue that, but he's only been around for one month or less, right? So, or two meetings. So, I, I, I think we're okay not to approve it this year, but you have a good point. Anything to add, Director Pillow? So, you were going to put our reimbursement, sorry, the misses, our reimbursement for his transportation and travel in a separate line from legal fees. Not in a separate line. That Part of his legal fees. Yes. Okay. Um, right, as reflected in those numbers. No, I thought maybe you were going to put it in their transportation and travel. Okay. But is that representative of the actual cost of legal fees? Like. That's the agreement that we entered into. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, my my question would be if we do want to add more money on top of it for any extra services that may uh, may be required. But also, um, one thing that we know is we entered into this agreement uh, with this firm who's been very interested in helping us at the lowest cost possible. Um, I think what we have here is um, presents a good faith effort for what we hope to be able to pay in this coming year. So I wouldn't want to go too much above this, if, if anything. I, I agree. I agree. You know, and in the law, there is that section where we could set aside money for contingencies. We should have a good board discussion about well, what what it, what are the types of contingencies we want to set up a reserve for. But if you go to the county, you know they have a fairly significant um, litigation reserve fund, and you know even the outside independent auditors might come in and assess your when they get their letters from your lawyers and stuff. 
they sometimes can book a liability on you on an accrual basis to say, well, you have significant outstanding litigation, and you should be putting that on your books as an accrual, um, as an expense in a given year. So we need to keep in mind that if we face significant litigation or potential litigation, we need to start measuring that, and then we might want to have a contingency fund that um, starts setting money aside over a long term for that if that makes sense to do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but at this time, uh, do we propose raising this at all or continuing to move down? I don't I would, I I would keep, keep it the same. same. Cool. OK. Um, for contractual services, we have that at $0. Again, because of uh, keeping in mind the professional services we're already contracting for and with. Um, Bob, what were some of these? Well, so an example of a contractual there? service would be if we entered into an agreement for community policing. That would be different than professional services. So professional services are general manager, um, maybe if used an architect or something like that, where we're talking about contractual services are where we're co contracting for services, actual services, graffiti abatement, those types of things. That's, a, that's the difference in the definitions. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So someday we could have an amount if we enter into an agreement with the university or the sheriff, that contract could end up in that line item. So I'm, I'm sitting here thinking you might want to put some money in for under contractual services for who's going to fix up the office? Dead St. George. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Where are you, Ed? Ed Did the uh, is that part of the county agreement? Not to get ahead of our No, there's no tenant improvements in the county agreement. Okay, so I, I just think that we should maybe put in $500 under contractual services, knowing that we're going to probably have to have somebody come in here. And, I mean, is that... I'll give, I you my, I'll, give I, you, I'll give you my idea about yeah. uh, tenant improvements. Um, as it relates to the budget? As it relates to the budget. Um, that, you know, we had this discussion and it's in the agreement who's going to control the keys. It's kind of like Jay's camera over there. Those door locks, when I go to unlock that door back there, it's like I could jimmy that lock or I don't, I don't know. They're just weird locks on those doors with gaps in them that why couldn't we have keyless entry that we controlled with a computer that we could give a group if they're going to use this thing, here's your code for the night, that code's good, they let themselves in, you know, they give us their deposit or something, and, you know, we could control entry into the room and we can have a record of who's entering the room, part of the reservation system. So just my thought that, and it might not be now that we put this in, but if we're going to manage this room, I think we should do it a little bit better than with keys. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's sorry. a really good idea. Go ahead. Uh, I've had the same thought, and now I, I'm kicking myself that I didn't spend some time doing research to figure out how much that would cost. Yeah. <laughs> <And> yeah. <laughs> you, you're good at that, well, and that's why. Well. I, I, think, I think you guys are really smart on technology, and the world's changed with keyless entry. And so I, I think um, I think we should just, I, we could put a token amount in here. It's, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money? It's a lot of money. Is it? I, it's I a know. lot of money. I, the I, one that we use for AS isn't that expensive. I think there is might it one that you can constantly be changing the codes on? Yeah, it's not a code, but it's a little button, and you give them the button, and then you can deactivate and activate it. Oh, like it. a fob? Yeah. Kind of? I, I, I thought that would be expensive. And then you can turn it on and off. I think per, yeah, I think per door, it's not that expensive. But what about the system managing all of the I users? I could look it up. I just, I, it's going to yeah. be expensive, yeah. but it's not going to be like... Yeah ungodly especially considering it's not like new technology you know i think we're kind of yeah right. that. i just got my thing to touch. we could investigate it yeah, we don't have to it. put it in a budget yeah, i just think it would be a more fun way to manage this it's a great idea the more modern yeah. way to manage well and and even if we don't do something high tech like that i think there is still a lot of room for doing some sort of a system because i mean you know with the way that reserving this room works right now if you want to go and reserve a key for the room and reserve the room for a time, then you go over to IVRPD and talk to Rodney, 
and Rodney or someone from the Parks District is there from, you know, 9 to 5. Now, I don't anticipate us having that full-time staff, so we are. we're going to Well, we're on agenda because we have this as our next discussion item, so we'll assume that then. And yeah, uh, so Jackie anyway, I was just so going to say. Just go ahead. Okay. Do you do your thing? I was just going to say that even, like, maybe it is worth allocating some amount of money towards uh, something of that nature, even if it's not something high-tech. Extra uh, keys. <laughs> <laughs> so it says, maybe that. just from, like, a very quick... Um, Google search just it says a complete keypad or card-based access control system for single door is typically 1500 to 2500 installed. The more doors you add, the lower the price per door is, and these prices include the hardware, software, and installation. For that's like an average across the market. So I bet we could get it cheaper if that's an average of $1500. So I don't know if we want to allocate any money towards that, but well, what we were also just saying is that if we did have a keypad, then it would have to be it would have to come with software that would allow like the for code to ask to salt like stay for one day these are also like these are for corporate areas it's not like i'm getting one for like adt for my house like i'm looking at the ones for corporate areas and i'm sure you could find something but it's saying that the system average in the for a complete keypad or card-based access system with hardware and software is between 1500 and 2500 from your system for google search i i think this will be a great thing for us to talk about with our final budget Director Freeman, if you were closing that, then uh, I'm not closing it, but that's that's where I'm at on this. Like, I I won't be ready to support oh, it. Oh, now. Okay. Now, I was gonna say, I mean, like for the extent of, I mean, that door there, the one that's actually like a, has a physical door jam. I actually have an unboxed thing in my apartment that costs that was given to me by somebody that costs fifty dollars. That actually you can just go and spend five minutes and actually retrofit that into one of them. But the problem is that we don't have a. It's like these doors here that swing through. We essentially have to like modify the door and possibly modify the like the metal panels in order to get. Because I've been thinking about this because it, this is the exact same door structure that my office has, and I've been thinking about the same problem, which is why I've kind of like looked into this a little bit. But and that's why I think it ends up costing more than you expect. And we have, that one's not sufficient because we still have to allow people to go from the exterior in here somehow. So, but, okay. But tenant improvements. Yeah. Would tenant improvements go into contractual services item or no? Uh, that's prob probably not. Probably like going to office expense. Depends if they're less than five thousand dollars. I mean, why? It Where depends on what what kind of what kind of you know if it's contractual services to have somebody come in and retrofit that mm -hmm. door, mm -hmm. then it could be in contractual services. So it can, and if it's less than five thousand dollars, it's probably all right there. Because you're going to get somebody to retrofit that door. We're not going to do it. We're going to enter into a contract with somebody to do it. Right. Now, do we want to come back with our final one to have a separate line item for tenant improvement or facility maintenance or whatever that might be? Or do we just want to put an amount of money under contractual services for that now? I, I would just say either either put a token amount of money under control. No, I, I just think we should leave it blank and come back with tenant improvements as part of the final budget or as a budget adjustment in the future. Cool. That's my take. We're not ready for it. Okay. Anyone Anybody else have else? anything on contractual but services? But this started with George saying, are yeah. there certain tenant improvements that we're going to want to do over there and budget for just to make that office habitable? Yeah. I apologize for opening. That. No, no, no. Oh, I it's, think a it's, great. I, it's a great door to open. I mean, <laughs> well, so on that note, I mean, were there things that, uh, it's actually been a while since I've been in there and really looked at it. Is, is there something that you're thinking of that's going to cost us money that needs to get fixed? I don't know. Okay. I well, just assume any time you go into an, an area that has been... The back room's a, a totally, it's a, like a storage closet. I mean, it's all storage. There's no carpet in there. There's, oh, soap, okay. there's, there's chairs and stuff, and there's a back room that could be a server closet but it's not equipped to be a server closet it has a bunch of chairs stacked into it and so you know we're going to have to do you know the directors are pretty handy around here so we'll probably be in there with nails and hammers you know <laughs> and some tackling <laughs> but anyway, we're, how to paint. <laughs> i i, I want to move on with this budget um sounds like we're not putting anything in that i know okay. down to publications and legal notices we have five hundred dollars um bob I know you uh, You came up with that number for that. That's assuming that we will have some things that we have to 
notice well, I, think we, I think we have to like do some notices in the paper and we could end up with some election notices um, so I, th I think it's just a token amount to say that we can pay for publications and legal notices that we're required to do okay anyone have any change for that one yeah. okay um, for transportation and travel in our first meeting of our committee we did have a number there um, since there have been times and will continue to be times where directors are required to find a cheap option to travel um, and at first we did have a, a small amount budgeted um, because with the rationale that we are uh, paying for someone we're contracting with to travel here um, perhaps there is an opportunity for um, a small amount to be in part reimbursed if a director is required to travel on district business um, but our committee uh, decided not to push that forward at this time. Uh, but to leave, uh, leave the item similar to how we had regular salaries um, and especially commissioner director trustee item on here because um, while the district's not paying for it, it is still something that should be kept in mind because it is an expense. Yeah, and I, and I just told the committee that, you know, as directors, there's one thing about not paying ourselves to go on board sponsored travel that we pay for it ourselves but it also opens up the door that um, on other issues about if somebody really wants you to go attend something and say I'll pay for your travel you know it also opens up the door on the quid pro quo side of you know you traveling with somebody because and they're, they, because they want to get something from you. And so it's always good to have a transportation and travel policy that's solid for us as an organization because you do want to reimburse the directors for the business costs that they incur um, as part of this organization. I mean, that's probably one of the first policies I changed when I took over as auditor controller because I was trained that when you travel, it's my responsibility to travel, but the organization should really fairly reimburse you for that travel under a good travel policy. And, you know, it's hard to say that someday these, you guys as directors will get stipends or someday you guys will get reimbursed for training and travel, but it's part of an organization that's very important to effectively reimburse you for your costs. So, you don't get into problems with other people reimbursing you for your costs, or you get exposed to that. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and one, one thing I will add, because um, I, I so appreciate that, um, but also we, we all do need to be mindful about um, cost. the, well, costs on, on all of this totally, but um, right. Form 700 does, uh, and the applicable codes do uh, state what our, uh, what our gift limit is as public officials, and. Um, it does state protocol and what is legal for, for travel. So um, to avoid that, I think we have to but that gift look limit at the is, law. That gift limit is now high. It's 300 and some dollars per person. So somebody could easily pay for a plane ticket to Las Vegas for you. To I don't think we have any business in Vegas. <laughs> sure, there's uh, great training in Contractors. <laughs> right. Director Freeman? So to, to verify and understand the context of this, is this for um, potentially um, Bob and George to travel to this meeting because I know my cost to get to this meeting was zero because um, I, I bike today, um, and then possibly to when if we direct, for example, Ethan to go talk to another board, the cost of him traveling to the board of supervisors or to Sacramento. We, or we to, could could go to there, but my thought was when I originally suggested this to to at least Ethan is well he's going to go testify mm -hmm. on AB seven twenty two and he's going to got to get a ticket to Sacramento and you know. Why should we be paying the guy from Upton his mileage when we're going to send Ethan up there and he gets to pay for it himself? He's he's do he's testifying on behalf of our district and we expect him to just incur that cost. I just that was actually like what I said Sacramento on my list. So yeah, yeah, I, I just I, th I think we can have a transportation and travel policy when to reimburse. We should do it at a different meeting than the budget meeting, but we should come up with a policy and it might be a long term policy that we're not going to put in, but. There might be some temporary things we might want to start paying for. So we, what about, yeah. sorry, I have a question. Sure. So what about the maintenance? I know we talked about, sorry, jumping back to where we were, maintenance on this building, 
this place all maintenance people just enter? We uh, don't pay for any of that, um, which we'll be talking about in the next item. So that's not something we have to worry about. We got it. So thank you. Director Bill? I was just going to say, I really appreciate you for bringing this up because I hadn't even thought about it like that when we were originally talking about this item. Um, and I think that it's definitely a policy that should be considered. And it's also one that should be phased in once we're on more solid ground. Yeah. Um, right now, I think we really need to minimize costs like this. And right. speaking specifically to the budget item, are, are you willing to put any, any money by that now? For transportation and travel? Yeah. No, I'm advocating it for okay, stay zero. Cool. Yeah. yeah, policy will uh, okay. figure out at a later date. I'm, I'm also advocating for zero agreement. And then the last thing we have in here, um, we have $1,000 for training. Originally, we had $700 for training, figuring $100 per director. But then when we got rid of the transportation and travel, we shifted more money over to uh, this one to have a total of $1,000. Um, I'm pretty happy with that number. What does that entail? Well, we have our our mandatory trainings as directors, um, such as the um, ethics, which that one we can get for free. Um, however, there's also the um, sexual harassment training. So I don't have to pay for that out of pocket? That's why we want to have that in here. Um, and I think, uh, I mean, this. I think that this is one area where I'm comfortable um, trying to put some funding so that we don't have to take money out of pockets. Um, even though uh, it is expensive for a lot of areas of our job, especially travel, um, I can't justify, uh, or I can't feel good about trying to get reimbursed with the limited means we have right now. But for training, since um, it is something that ultimately makes us a better board and um, helps us comply with the law, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm in support of having that money there. Is there another word that we can use besides training? I guess that's what it is, though, isn't it? The certification to follow it. Professional development. That's not <laughs> that's something that doesn't. I'm, just, I'm looking at this budget as a common citizen, thinking training, thousand dollars. What what do they need to train? Well, the law tells well, us what we yeah. do. <laughs> um, no, no, I, I understand. Yeah. Do you I'm like professional at, development? Well, I'm, I. I Maybe by the time we come to the next board, the next budget meeting, we can come up with a word that that it, that feels like it's good for the citizenry, as opposed to training. Kind of feels like, you know. Yeah, well, you're not going to change the state controller's chart of accounts. Is that is this a state controller's chart of accounts? Yeah. Well, I can look there and see if there's a better. We can look in the chart of accounts and see if there's something. Better. Well, the other would be to call it training and miscellaneous. Is that a problem? No, there's no miscellaneous in training. No. Yeah. There's no. Because then, <laughs> then people would be really in, in, in innovative and put a lot okay. of miscellaneous. Yeah. Okay. Well, we could look for, uh, I'll take it and we'll look for it and see if there's an alternative account that's professional development or something. Well, and George, the FPPC does call this training. I, I'm not, I am, I am, I am thinking about this as, this is the most, this is the mo will be the most publicly scrutinized document that we produce all year. And I, and I want us to be able to go through here and easily explain everything and have it transparent. Training is one that I just find it's, it's weird. It's weird to have public officials need training. Lots of it. It's I know, they, I know. They <laughs> should have a lot of that. Yeah. I know, I understand. I'm just, yeah. so, thank you. I'm done. Uh, all right, any any other uh, questions. comments, questions on that one? <laughs> uh, Jeremy? This, this member of the public thinks training, no one is ever above training. Um, <laughs> you're a professional. <laughs> you totally understand training. Okay. Um, so with that, we've gone through all of the um, services and supplies. Now uh, going to other charges, $9,000 rents slash leases. The structure, self-explanatory. I don't think there's anything we're changing there. Nope. Um, communication service. We have two thousand dollars there, um, and that's for phone and internet. We were assuming um, 
one hundred dollars a month for internet, a hundred dollars a month for phone. Though I, after meeting with Spencer yesterday, I think we can find it for cheaper. I, I still would be comfortable having that number there, though. Me too. Um, and even though, like, I, I think we're gonna have a very basic phone setup, it will be important that we have a number that people can call and leave a message on, other than a, a number that routes to my cell phone right now. So. <laughs> I think that will be a good first put in place. Uh, Director Freeman? Um, so I, I complex. This is the next agenda item. We're talking about the contract that's related to this, um, yeah. which has a sentence in it. Can I can talk about that now? Cause it's really if if it's going to be helpful to this, yeah. yeah. So it has the office rent includes electricity, but the IBCSD is responsible for providing its own telephone and or internet access. Um, now, I, I've, I've been talking to people about that sentence and to try to verify like what they might might have meant by that because they actually have public internet here um, that I'm I often using during these meetings and what's it called? Uh, it's a CSB C O S B G S. So who pays for that? The county, county of Santa Barbara, general okay. services. And this Great, they, if it reaches to that room, knock yourself out. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep the money in there anyway, just in case it doesn't. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah so you said that the there might also be a desire for the hardwired too. Yeah. We really aren't going to know, I think, until we start buying up computers or whatever it is. Yeah, the only thought that I had had is that they maybe they would have wanted us, like, essentially that the that sentence is in this contract because they don't want to be. They've not guaranteed that this will be here, and at some point, if for whatever reason that goes through their head, they need to remove this, they don't want to be like, well, you're, and so that's why it's not, but, but as far as from my the, like, budget perspective, I seriously doubt that it's going to disappear in the next short period of time, and so it, it is like, I mean, it, it worked Unless really well. Unless you want to keep it. <laughs> you know it's secret. You're, it, you're totally holding a secret. Is it going to stay or is it going to go? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Um, I, I, I think what they what they what they probably by the contractor saying is we're not going to give you a hardwired internet connection back there like probably the third district has, which would mean you'd be paying ITS services downtown for that port, that hardwired port. But I don't know what kind of service you guys used to have back there. Oh, uh, Supervisor Hartman never had access to that off like. I mean a key, but never use that office. Supervisor Farr had an office, and I didn't work for Supervisor Farr, so. You don't know what kind of, yeah, what kind of internet access she had. I think we can look into that, but. Well, one thing, I, I believe I actually checked at some point and verified that this was just Cox Business Services. Is what? Um, this is Cox Business Services. Like, oh, they, okay. just, they just got a Cox account, and then they just wired this thing, and then. Yeah. Well, then we're looking at, like, I think it's 120 or 150 a month, something like that, <coughs> from what I remember. Right. And now one thing that this is bringing up in my mind is I'm not sure that in office, office expense or any other item, the three of us considered the cost of purchasing a computer. We did. That, do we oh, need one? I thought I did. Where, I, I hope she did. Where, uh, <laughs> where do we have the money uh, in there for? One. Mm, you know, it might not have made it all the way into here. And um, can we well, we can agree on the on two thousand for you, communications? Can you live with the idea that the university would buy a computer and place it over here and own that computer? That's really a good idea. I love the idea. The reason I think it's important, well, the one thing that we'll have to explore is the reason I'm really interested in the computer is for complying with the California Public Records Act. So that way, when we have interns. Right. Doing district business, their personal right. devices aren't. Um, right. Compromised. It, yeah. So if it's for use by interns, I think that would be great. We that would be something that um, we'd have to figure out the just the legal co cooperation. Um, you would not be hooked into the university system. I can tell you that they won't let they won't let. So it'd be sitting out here on its own network. Awesome. So Perfect. with that in mind, uh, do we want to hope that we can find a computer be to be donated, or do we want to put some money in just in case? No, I would put it in. Uh, my recommendation is that you put it in here for when you go to the university and say, here are the overhead things that we really need to use that 20000 right. for. And a computer is a much easier sell, I think, than 
So, so do we so want to do we want to suspend? I mean, I we'll think the, services. I think we need a box that's secured in that storage room in the back closet there. That's where our public records are going to be kept. But I, if you get into that room, there's a back room there that seems to be yeah. enough room to do our public record storage in the closet at least. Um, and I, I think that well, is there a line item for that. There's not a lot of money to budget for. I'm saying I think we should budget for a computer. Cool. Um, so, do we want to take communication services and move it from 2000 to 2500 I think we would place that in office expense or something else because I don't think a computer is a communication service. Okay. Uh, I would agree. <laughs> and I would put 2000 in. That's for two computers. 2000 How about 1000 <laughs> At least 15, if, we, if we're thinking two computers. Yeah. Okay. Um, so with that in mind, if we were to do 15, that would bring us to 2,700 for office expense, mm -hmm. which is uh, still under the base estimate for uh, the financial feasibility study, what they found there. So we're still putting some costs. So should we keep it at 2,600? Uh, that's the copier expense. So right above that, 2,700. And with that, we've gone through all of our all of our liability insurance. Oh, I'm sorry. The, well, that's already baked in. So, okay, liability insurance. Now, my question, Bob, is I know we're the terms of our agreement are subject to, to re-underwriting as after the third year. After the third year. Okay. Great. So then, I'm I'm comfortable with that for this preliminary budget. Do you need a motion to approve this? We need to play around with the numbers real quick, I think, to see what our totals are with. Well, we also still it. need to have a conversation about the stipend. The travel? No, no. The general manager. Oh, general manager. changes reflect in the motion? Because I haven't typed out, but I'm not sure I got them all, but I think I did. So I'm actually starting to write language for motion, and let's run our ideas by each other. I was thinking motion to approve the amended preliminary budget as recommended by the budget ad hoc committee, and to direct the budget ad hoc committee to prepare recommendations for a final budget. Yeah, I think that sounds good. The only thing is that it's a it's not recommended by the budget ad hoc committee because we just made a bunch of changes to it. That's why I said that the amended recommended budget. Oh, Even though that's right. super wordy, I think that yeah, encompasses that's what that's we're trying to do. <laughs> um, we also so need to set a hearing date for the adoption of the budget. Um, sure. And I think that we should authorize you to uh, do the noticing requirements in local newspapers. Okay. Do, do you know what date we're planning on doing that? We have on here July 26th. That's the second. July 26th, uh, okay. I, I won't be present at that meeting. I but think we'll. Don't need me. <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll, uh, we'll get there in a minute, but Jay. And can we spell recommended correctly at the top of the budget? I'm all for that. All right. <laughs> um, I have one more thing, uh, or I just wanted to kind of run down what the budget looks like right now in comparison to what we had. Um, so the uh, source of funds, there's no change. Um, the In uh, services and supplies, um, 7324 audit and accounting fees increased $1,000. Uh, memberships, we budgeted twelve. Uh, 
is staying on the safe side. That's that would be CSDA. Um, office expenses, um, we increase that by fifteen hundred for a computer. Uh, copier expenses. Maybe you could say the totals. Yeah, uh, yeah twenty seven hundred uh, is the total on that one for memberships. It's twelve fifty for audit and accounting fees. It's fifteen hundred uh, for copier expenses. We decreased it. Um, by was it 1100 so we went down from 2600 to 1500 for professional and special service say the same zero for legal fees the same 6000 contractual services the same zero publications and legal notices the same 500 transportation and travel is the same zero uh, training the same 1000 so that brings the total for services and supplies uh, to 14 450. That's up, um, what is that, I believe, around 300 and, I'm not good at math. 3,200. 3,200, <laughs> perfect. Um, so we, we also, let's see, the other charge is exactly the same. Um, whereas the net financial impact, which is basically the money that we have left over in the original recommended budget was 5,000. Now it's down to 2,350. Um, and if you add the uh, 4,500 that's rolling over from the previous year, uh, that comes out to 6,850 uh, total. And of course, just keeping in mind that that 4,500 is completely unrestricted money. Uh, that's the money from the third district and the money from private donations. Um, and say again, the, uh, the net impact, it went from 5,000 to, did you say 2,350? That's right, good. And the title changed. Oh, yeah, I can do that right now. Just uh, did an independent calculation and got the same numbers. Uh, the other change that we were wanting the uh, the committee to make when they come back with the final budget is to add a tenant improvements column, and ostensibly we would allocate some amount of money to that to that line item as well. So. Uh, the, I, the last thing that we have to do, I guess, is talk about this stipend for a general manager. Um, and it looks like the total amount of money that we have uh, is 68.50 is the money that we have left uh, that's discretionary at this point. Um, and so, um, I don't know, if, can I share something that uh, I've been in communication with our legal counsel about? that pertains to the necessity. If it's something, no, no. Okay. If, if you want to talk about how much it'll cost, go right ahead. But um, no convincing the need for it. Okay, for, well, for the right now. That I'm, I don't really have a whole lot to say on the cost other than what we've talked about in the formation committee initially, uh, I think, was a stipend for uh, a pro bono general manager so that that person would be able to afford liability insurance because under the original plan that we had, where this person was an independent contractor, they weren't covered under our policy. However, uh, given that there were some doubts about whether or not that could be feasible to structure the general manager position as an independent contractor, uh, that's something that I think the committee is going to have to reevaluate. Um, at the time, what would we budget the stipend for? We 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 are throwing around numbers like five hundred, right? There's something for budget stipend. I think we were talking about five thousand annual, which would five thousand. That's what I was thinking about. But I mean, we we could if we're going to pay our attorney a two thousand and two thousand stipend. It seems like we could pay our manager a two thousand and two thousand stipend. Um, knowing it's not a full-time position and we get it. So if we had 68.50 and we set aside 4,000 for the general manager and maybe um, 
2000 as a contingency and 850 for tenant improvements, we'd have a balanced budget. I didn't catch that. What? I didn't catch that at all. One more time. That's just my, that's my off-the-cuff guess, you know. Can you repeat it? Hmm? What you just said. So there's 6850 left. Yes. If we set aside 4000 for general manager stipends, which to me is pretty important for the district, and it'd be equal to what we're paying our attorney over two six-month periods, and we put um, 850 into tenant improvements, and 2000 into um, contingency. And you know that contingency, in my thought at this point, we need to identify what contingency could be used for. But you know, one of those immediate needs that was discussed as part of that is, you know, if you, we had potential litigation, we would have two thousand dollars set aside for that. And then, what reserve requirements do we have? There's none in the in the law. It says you can have a capital reserve and you can have a contingency reserve. It also says in the law you should define what those reserves can be used for. So typically if you want to, as a board, to commit money to contingency, you're saying, well, we're going to put this money in contingency, but the only way to get it out of contingency is if we're going to use it for this. And so that's called uh, a committed, a part of committed fund balance. And if you were going to the other level of fund balance, if you had a restricted fund balance, let's say you're, if your outside auditors came in there and created a liability for $2,000, that you might want to change that to a restricted liability because it's almost like a legal request. Oh, yeah, I don't know. That, that's, a, that's a gut call about whether it's a commitment or a, a, a restricted. Cool. But it's just a way to say, hey, we have a balanced budget and we don't have any unassigned fund balance. Now, you know, if you have an unassigned fund balance, that means you can use it for anything, but we're putting ourselves into a box that we wouldn't have any discretionary money left to do other things we might want to do that are important to the community. If we had to put a little bunny, money into graffiti abatement or something like that, we'd have to go make some other cuts or something. Or, you know, the one area we really is not contemplated in this budget to do additional work is there's no money in there for donations. And so it's like we're adopting a budget that doesn't include my pledge for next year. And so, I mean, if, if we really think we can raise money in the community for some things, I think we say, well, when we raise money, are we going to raise it for more for direct services as opposed, if we have administration covered, then we could go out and do a better job maybe of raising money for direct services. And I, I think it would be easier to raise money for direct services okay. than it will be for administration. Right. Which is our next agenda item that we're speeding towards. Yes. Um, Director Brown? I just had a one more thing um, since we've been talking about this 6850, which is that, um, and I, maybe I should have been more clear on this back when we were talking about it, but the one area that we, we, so we increased memberships from zero to twelve fifty, and um, you know I, I will say that I'm if, if we if we're not going to get some sort of uh, relief, some sort of a, a deal from the special districts association, I'm going to find it hard to support putting in that amount of money for that membership, uh, given our financial situation, and I. I guess I, I'm just under the assumption that a lot of people on the board agree with that. So I guess I'm just asking. Yeah. I, I, and you know, with that we've gone to a different organization for our insurance, I kind of, you know, that's one of the big benefits you got there. If we went into the Special Districts Association, we'd tap into their insurance and they weren't that yeah. overtly, you know, they didn't come after us very strong. Yeah, and, and not to get too far into it, but it does seem like they're, the, Politically, they're actively lobbying against we, something that yeah that you know, does not affect our budget. Well, but um, it does affect whether or not you know I feel like I can support that amount of money for uh, this association. And it's not to say that their association is not valuable, but I if there is not, I will not be able to support in the final budget the twelve fifty and putting that in there was really I think out of the 
uh, want to, as George said, reflect the highest possible cost within that item. Yeah, I mean, with, without getting into any political frustrations that I very really may have, um, I, I too wouldn't be willing to spend twelve fifty because we do have a local special districts association, which really I, I think there's a lot of value in local networking, um, and then also uh, as far as the since we're not with special district risk management authority as our insurance provider, that's already like half of the a lot of the incentive for me. Not there, so. so I, I had suggested putting it in there. I'm happy to take it out. I mean, I still do see some value though, just not 1250. If we want to cut it down. But did we uh, have a consensus on the four thousand dollars for a stipend and your other suggestion, five hundred dollars for contractors? I always put an eight fifty for contract improvements, but you know, okay. If if we want to cut the memberships down. By six fifty, we'd have fifteen hundred dollars for contract improvement. Yeah. I, I think it's more. I, I think it's very important to have um, good workspace for the organization. I mean, my my commitments are good workspace, good tools, good training. If you want to run a really good organization, and you want to have a good environment, what about good people? Good people. Oh, well, that's way at the top of the list. Smarter than me. <laughs> so I guess my concern is just that there's very little money left to work. That's my underlying concern as well. So, so I, I guess your goal is to put more money in contingency. Yes. So if you had a five thousand dollar contingency, that leaves um, one thousand. That, that, that doesn't leave you much for a general manager. Unless we're going to wait on the general manager and say if we can fundraise for the general manager, then we'll offer the stipend, which was our discussions before. That really the stipend for the general manager is depending on fundraising. That's, and so if we want to do something with the 6850 um, and cut that, Twelve fifty down to six hundred and add six fifty back. I'd be happy to do that, and then we could have a five thousand contingency, and we'd have about add six fifty back to what? So if we cut the twelve fifty on memberships back to six hundred, okay. Then then we would have on the bottom line. Then we'd have six fifty there. I get rid of that fifty bucks. I think before. That makes my math easier, harder in my head. I'm trying to teach Spencer that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this would be the number. Thirteen eight fifty would be the, if we took. I'm just the just 600 yeah. out of yeah. just go to the bottom. Took the 650 out of that, right? That are the si yeah, six. No, I think we were thinking we left so 600. There. Here, here's all I'm doing is so you yeah. take this 650 and put it back. In yeah, okay, so that's what I have. Yeah, 650 down here. Just go down to the bottom. Go all the way down. So if you add 650 back to this, we're at 7,500. So if you want a $5,000 contingency, we have $2,500 that we can allocate. And if we want to make, you know, at, at least an effort at saying we're going to pay the general manager something, we could have put $1,000 in there and we could put 1500 in tenant improvements. Would be some of my thoughts, but I don't know what the rest of the. So, so fifteen hundred and ten improvements versus the eight fifty that you mentioned before. Yeah, I'm just I'm just rethinking it because you want to put five thousand dollars in contingency, yeah. which I, I think is a good idea. Director Kim, um, I, I will bring in my again um, as I have in various other meetings. We need to be thinking a couple years in 
ahead. Red. And the um, in another year and a half, we are going to incur a large expense of the election of three board members, bare minimum. Whether we try to put a tax on the ballot or not, we're going to have to pay for the election of three board members. And so, um, I, like, if, if I, like, when it comes up that oh yeah, let's remove let's remove something from a, from an item, I'm like yeah. And then it's like okay, well now that means we can make another item bigger. I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second. Like I, I, I'm just just add like trying to put something somewhere else because we no longer need it in one place is not is not a sufficient justification for me. Like if we have, if we really we're already fine because we, we we had some extra money at the end anyway. If we were already trying to increase something, that's fine. But if we're just like oh maybe we should consider increasing this now that we decrease something else. But I'm kind of on, on your page with that. Um, well, like, I, I, I guess, like, I, I was just surprised to increase the 10 improvements from 850 to 1500. Yeah. I, I just, I, maybe we shouldn't have that discussion at all until everybody tours that room. Is that bad? It, I mean, it's, it's unfinished. <laughs> the, like, the back room right. is unfinished. It's totally I'm, unfinished. I'm really looking at what we can get to work in the front room right away. But, yeah. but I mean, okay. I, I hear your concerns too. Director Brown? Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I, I think the front room is going to be the place where the action happens, so to speak. Um, right, but, but, but we still need to do the back room and have like a some computer storage and some kind of secure locations back there with the public records. and. You know, we're going to have to secure those public records. And yeah, well, and I'm not advocating that we allocate zero dollars towards ten improvements. I think 850 sounds like a good number. Okay. But I'm also thinking, and I think just like you, RJ, a couple years down the line, in the, that it doesn't seem to me worthwhile to even run an election if we don't have the general manager figured out by that time. And I think that that is the biggest thing that we should be prioritizing with this last little chunk of money. Because even if this isn't uh, you know, a full funding of a general manager, um, it is definitely a step in that direction. And I think that the original thing that Formation Committee has spoken about in terms of being able to fundraise for a stipend, I think that that supplementing this amount of money uh, would really, we could actually have something that is not, you know, just pennies on the dollar. Um, and so I think that we should allocate a lot of that towards the general manager. Director Freeman. Um, I mean, uh, I have not stated explicitly, Ethan, Ethan did for me, and then uh, it was about the, I was mostly commenting on the, um, let's put more into the uh, tenant improvements. Um, as far as putting things in the stipend of the general manager, I think I agree with that, but only on, on its merits by itself. Um, the, I, I, I will say, though, that your comment about if we don't have general manager, we shouldn't even bother running an election, that essentially would mean if we don't have general manager, we should weirdly dissolve our district because we can't not have that election. I didn't say that we should do that. I said it wouldn't be worthwhile to me. It as, as the community, you're saying that the community services district wouldn't be worthwhile because like, we can't not run that election. I'm not suggesting that we don't run yeah. the election. I was making a point about I just value this point. district as a sustainable community services district going forward. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, try to get a solid number in here. So what are you proposing for, for general manager? Do they go down to 1,000? Well, let me let, let's put in the what is it eight fifty for the tenant improvement for the tenant improvements. I'm just going to go ahead and add a tentative row to this. Are you comfortable with that, Bob? Because I, I know we're going to have. I'd rather be the even number, <laughs> eight hundred <laughs> or a thousand. Oh, oh, but I mean, are you comfortable with putting in another row? Because I know these are all according to uh, the controllers categories. Is there? No, I, 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 I would just I would just put those tenant improvements in office expense. Okay. It's it's just immaterial. It's not. Yeah. Okay, so this would go up to thirty five hundred. So that you don't make it 600. Right. So it's, I don't have a problem with that if everyone else does. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> I just 
is taking wool. No, no, I didn't say you had to change it. I was saying make that my 650. Then I'll get rid of that 50. Okay. So, yeah, and I hadn't changed this yet. So now I'm yeah. going to change it yeah. to what we had planned on, which is this became for membership. Yes. I thought we went to 600 for that. You oh, we did. went to 600. Yeah. So then it's a. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to ignore yeah. that. This is, these are just my notes. Okay, I'm just making sure that everything else moved because in some of these it wasn't. I forgot it's political science, right? We can also come back and adjust the budget during the cycle if we have good fundraising and especially if we're going to target that fundraising towards more direct services, that means we're going to be adding more budget. So it's a six of one and a half dozen of the other, yeah. Okay. So good. The way I have it, there is 6,700 in unallocated. Right. After we have <coughs> increased the uh, maintenance or put the maintenance into office expenses. Tenant improvement. To the tenant improvements. Um, so 6,700 is the total unallocated. So there's the the 20, 2,200 is what is like within the budget for 1718. First seventeen eighteen, yeah, and then the forty five hundred is carry over. Carry the carryover. Well, I'm I'm very happy with that ending balance of sixty seven hundred, um, a lot better than the than the two thousand contingency. Well, but this is this is without the the an allocation towards uh, the, the, uh, the general, general manager. manager. So let's put that in. Okay. Uh, So I mean, I mean, I, I don't really know what where a good place to start with that is because I I, I agree that we should have a, 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 mm -hmm. a solid amount of contingency. Uh, does 2200 seem like a good place to start? It's certainly not much, but it is definitely. I think a lot of what I'm intending with this is for there to be a strong uh, intention within our budget that this is something that we want. And that leaves 4500 for the end. That's correct. I'm comfortable. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards, I, I think the general manager just is as important as legal counsel. And I, I'd like to see us have 4,000 there myself. And that I mean, would leave oh, that would leave 2,700 in un unallocated? For contingency, yeah. mm -hmm. Which would be a reserve or a contingency of? And so you said that we had to specify what the contingency is going to. So this contingency yeah. specifically in the case of litigation yeah. at this point? You said that we would have to specify what the contingency is used for. So to move money out of it. Yes. So but have we designated that purpose yet? Because I feel like we should have that purpose in mind if we're putting money in there. Do you know no, what I'm well, that's no. not. A, it's not a true contingency. It's just unallocated. Then it's unallocated. Then it's not a contingency. So that's different than it being a contingency, correct? That's true. So that then why true. are we talking about it as a contingency? So then it's just unallocated money that we can move around as needed. And in that case, then we can receive donations and have that fall into that unallocated fund. But if we were to have a contingency, I'd prefer to have that because I wouldn't want donations to go towards something like litigation. So if we're going to have a contingency, let's have a contingency, and that funny that money be there. If we're going to have an allocated funds. Let's have an allocated funds. So that's how I see that. And I agree, four thousand for the general manager makes sense for me. So that's my thought on the whole matter. Other than that, I think this. So, is so your suggestion there, Natalie, is leave the twenty-seven hundred <coughs> unassigned. Yes. And if we were to decide to move things around during our final yeah. budget acceptance, like at the last point, and decide that we do need a contingency, then we could do that. But I think we I think, I, I think I'd now. definitely be supportive of that. Well, I, let's I, just I, leave it as unassigned, and then yeah. we don't have to think about it. 
Has yeah, everyone I think feel about that? Well, we still have to think about it a lot, but the, I... But the downside of that is somebody looks at your budget and says, well, why should I give you any money? You didn't have me even assigned this money, so... The unallocated funds? Yeah, but most foundations... There are, everyone has money are gonna, ...are going to say, in fact, more and more they're saying, where's your... Contingency. Yeah. Okay, For so which one do we want? No, no, <laughs> no, no we want, I'm, I'm all right. We we're just... We're, we're, we're using the terms interchangeably. Yeah. yeah. I think we're okay. Twenty seven hundred isn't very much. I don't so think it is either, but then like I said, you mean contingency is defined in the law that you're supposed to say what can you use it for. But yeah. right now we're leaning towards keeping twenty seven hundred unallocated. Unallocated. Correct. That's what I'm supportive of. I, I still feel it's too little. Um, I mean I, I will be willing to, to vote for this preliminary and the budget committee works hard to so work towards the final. So put ten thousand in um, in uh, Donations. In an estimated Because we're going to raise 10000 in donations. I we're going to do it. We're going to do it or we're going to die. I think that we will be raising donations, but I think that, like, obviously we should keep in mind that that $2,000 will float us with whatever little things we have. If we've already balanced everything and realized that that's a reality, like, in my opinion, I'm not going to move money that if we know that that's going to be spent because that is an unrealistic budget and it's not really a budget at all. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, we're going to spend that much money on a printer. We're absolutely going to spend that much money on, like, different, different little things. So moving those dollars around and pretending like we're not going to spend it is unrealistic. Oh, I'm not talking about moving any of those around. Just okay. yeah, as no, far as the I, money that we're I think I understand yeah. your concern, which is that we it, it's a small amount to have in, quote, unquote, contingency. Basically, it's unallocated money in case we go over in any of these. And it's smaller than you would like to. I and I, I think that the, the value of at least allocating money towards the general manager position is 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 more important in terms of uh, public appearance and us taking a concrete step to be able to uh, get some staff in. Okay, I'm I'm comfortable with that. So to verify your stamp, please change the cap. The, tw the number that we're currently talking about, 2,700, is a number that would be in this box here. Mm -hmm. So our actual total unallocated, based on my understanding of this spreadsheet, which might be totally wrong. 2,200, sorry, Jack. 2,200 yeah. is actually then 6,700? Yes. Yeah. Because we also have the 4,500. Because we have the 45 that's going to carry over. Okay. Yeah, sorry. There's another, there are three more lines that me and Bob made after some other conversations that we had early in the meeting, which are called beginning fund balance, changes in fund balance, and ending fund balance, and it's basically, it is the carry over. Yeah, I, I, I brought that up just because we were just talking about the small amount to have unallocated, and the, and a number that began with a two, whether it was a seven or a two that came after that, was constantly better bantered around, and I think that it's actually a number that begins with a six. Yeah, yeah, okay. it's gonna be, so then it's not that little, right? For $6,000, it's not that little, right? 6000 for what? That's the amount that we would have not allocated. Not after the general manager, right? The general manager would, well, first okay. off, let's decide. We would put that correct in, in, in regular salaries. Would we allocate 4000 to regular salaries, or would we allocate that somewhere else? Um, my idea is, is that it's not as important as professional services, but... That's where you got 2700 from, because that's 4500 minus 4000 plus... That's correct. Plus yeah. Okay, right. I understand that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Different so it'd be professional and special services. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. I yeah. forgot that that was there. So are we supportive of the four thousand towards professional services for general managers? To leave a total of how much? A twenty seven hundred. Twenty seven hundred or twenty two? Twenty seven. If it it is twenty seven. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Four thousand. Forty five hundred. Yeah. I'm okay with it for this preliminary budget. Um, but look forward to working with the committee to talk more. Okay. So what exactly, because it is unallocated, what would be your concern for that extra unallocated funds? Would that? Oh, I'm not concerned right? about what's extra. I'm concerned about taking so away from the extra. And, and part of it could be just a little bit, like with IBRPD, okay. what we were always considering Could during our budget is, do we have set aside yeah. six months operating revenue? Which obviously I can't can even look so at yeah. that extent. Yeah. 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 But we can make it, it 2,000 sounds a little well, we can too fix that. little. Yeah. little. By going, let's go back up. 
Sure. By taking that out. Yeah. Yeah. See, the, see that line I feel like we should seriously no. consider, I mean, like we keep talking about the, the fact that it's keep unfurnished going. back there, but keep going, keep going. See this maybe we just need to live with the fact that we've got an unfurnished if you room that, that we have copy that line and move it to the top. And they've got a chair and table. Unfinished. 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 I didn't mean that, but yeah. But like we probably can't have people back Oh, like it's so unfinished that it's a safe, like a health hazard? Probably not a health hazard, but not, like, but not good. Just, if you just put a if you put well, a table and a chair in there, we can have people like we can furnish it. I wouldn't put someone back there. You that wouldn't put a fun balance. Eighteen hundred before eight. Sorry. Because then you have a zero balance. You have a balance budget. I think I, I think that some of the this some of this is the formula is not yeah, right. Yeah, okay. We just have to change the formula. Okay. But if you release this, it becomes a source, and then when it adds up, it's the zero. Okay. So I'm going to take this off, and we can do this. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, we need, we need a final number for all of these. No, I, I know. At least no, that's why I'm taking. I'm just showing them how to get rid of that. Yeah. We'll, we'll fix it. So yeah, the, the final number for ending fund balance, um, which is a column that you don't have on your budget, yeah. but that's basically our, uh, that's our unallocated, it's 2,700. Okay, and then now let's just go to totals for each of these subsections. So other charges is still 14,200. Other charges. Where is that? Right there, fourteen. Yeah, fourteen thousand two hundred. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, services and supplies is now at eighteen six hundred. Where am I supposed to go? Eighteen hundred. One more time. Eight eighteen thousand six hundred. And then regulars. So salaries and employee benefits. That's still at zero. Yes. Source of funds. Uh, we have 31,000 for 17, 18, 4,500 for uh, 16, 17. Correct. And then going right above that to intergovernmental, we have 3,000 for 16, 17, 31,000 for 17, 18. Correct. Cool. That sounds good. Um, all right. Jonathan, what uh, kind of language were we drafting before the motion? Approve the amendment. Approve the amended preliminary budget as recommended by the Budget Ad Hoc Committee and direct the Budget Ad Hoc Committee to prepare recommendations for a final budget. Can you uh, share with me that minute doc real quick so I can just see it yeah. up here? Uh, to your CSD or your CSD. We adopted a preliminary budget. This will take the place of this, and it'll say 2017 2018 fiscal year preliminary budget. Okay. How many columns? Can you read it out to me? Sure. Approve the amended preliminary budget as recommended by the budget ad hoc committee and to direct the Budget Ad Hoc Committee to prepare recommendations for a final budget. Now, the only part that I, I might want to tighten up is, uh, which I, I said this before, but um, amended and recommended. Me too. So approve the amended preliminary budget as recommended by the, prelim by the Budget Ad Hoc Committee. So maybe... Just get rid of recommended because we're not approving something that was recommended. We're approving the amended. Of the recommended. Um, I think maybe approve the recommended preliminary budget with amendments. Mm -hmm. That something sounds like good. That, that, sounds, that good. sounds good. That's better. Thank you. Or as amended. As amended. And then and I see, Jonathan, you've recorded uh, some of the changes 
on the middle. Right. I think there's a couple others that I missed. Um, I'll start to cross reference it right now. I think so. Uh, always ready for mm -hmm. just come real quick. Um, I think we should set the hearing date in a separate motion. All right. Because this is the one that we're legally required to do by, by the state. So um, who's interested in making this motion? I'd love to make the motion. Great. Um, Mr. Chair, I have a motion. Uh, I move to approve the budget ad hoc committee's recommended preliminary budget for fiscal year 2017-2018 as amended and to direct the budget ad hoc committee to prepare recommendations for a final budget. Do we have a second? <laughs> I'll second. Okay, made by Brant, seconded by Geis. Um, and for the record, it, it lists um, the changes as were amended in this meeting, though I don't think that needs to be a part of the motion. Is that comfortable with the, the maker and the, the second? Yes. Yep. Okay. Any public comment? This is just preliminary budget. We will come back for a final budget. Jeremy? Maybe between now and the final budget, it might be good. Given that there isn't much money, and it's kind of a bare, we're looking at a bare bones here to maybe actually go and price the, the, some computers. I just to think of maybe bare bones computers, too. Cool. Um, I think with an exact number, that would be, maybe that would be good. Thank you. Anything else? I don't think it would cost as much as Seeing no more public comment, any more board discussion? All right, and uh, we're gonna do a roll call vote for this. Um, and I'll call the question. I am uh, Director Bertrand, I say aye. Director Jordan? Aye. Director Brandt? Aye. Director Freeman? Aye. Director Hedges? Director Geis? Aye. Director Thurlow? Epstein. Okay. Uh, motion passes five in support, uh, one member absent from the meeting, one member abstaining from the vote. So ordered. Um, Mr. Chair, I have another motion. Okay. 
Um, I move to set a hearing date for the adoption of the fiscal year 2017-2018 budget for July 25th, 2017, and to authorize the president of the board to publish all required notices in a newspaper of general circulation. No time. Time of that meeting. 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Can I get a second on that? Second. You want to read this? It's it's B and C with 6 p.m. added. Yeah. 25th or 26. Oh, I heard you say it. It says 25 on here, but it's 26. Uh, we have 26 on the agenda. Are you looking to move that date? Um, I was looking to move 25th because that's when we have a regular meeting scheduled. Okay, so then we have. Um, We've messed up this agenda, which I'm I'm fine as long as we make it clear that the description is not legally binding. Oh, I know, but yeah. we should just make it clear that there will not be a meeting on that date, since we did uh, send this out. I just remind you, I'll, I'll be absent for that morning, but you guys will be fine. So it is July 26th. No, it, it is July a 25th is, month, is a Sunday. I don't know what you're looking at. No, uh, maybe I'm looking at last year. July 25th is Tuesday. Yeah. So that's Tuesday. You're looking at June, I think. Hmm. Okay. And that's the, the fourth. Um, Tuesday, so we have a regularly scheduled meeting. Spencer's the Google Docs SNL free. It's working on mine. No, what what do you mean? I just mean the change that could be the it. words are going off the side and not indenting them. Do you see the change I just made, Spencer? Yeah, I do. Are you friendly with that? Yes. Okay, so what I just changed was um, set a hearing date for the adoption of the fiscal year 2017-2018 budget for July 25th, 2017, instead of the July 26th, 2017 date listed on the agenda of this meeting, and to authorize the president of the board to publish all required notices in a newspaper of general circulation. Mm -mm. And is that friendly with the second? Mm-hmm. Any public comment? All right. Uh, any more board discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. All right. Is there anything else uh, in this agenda item that anyone would like to discuss or take action on? Okay, great job, everybody. Yeah, great job. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, now moving on to, we're, actually, we're gonna go out of order to 2.3 just because we have Gina here. Um, and uh, it is just, I don't think this is gonna take up much time, but just looking at the draft agreement um, that uh, the third district office was able to come up with in coordination with uh, general services and uh, in consultation with myself as well. Um, I'm flipping to it. Mm -hmm. the, 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 this, there's like no, none of the legalese is in this, just to be clear, like this is just sort of to put in front of you so we can keep this ball moving and hopefully get you in, I mean like, by July 1st. Um, well, I think that's a Sunday, so. July. <laughs> like, <July>. <laughs> <laughs> like in the first days of July. Um, um, so that will all be part of it, and then actually liability insurance will have to be, I'm not sure exactly where you're in that process yet. So uh, I just got authorization from our council to enter into it, and I was in touch with them today. Okay, excellent. Um, but that this is just used as exactly as it is a draft to kind of be like this clear clear idea of what we're looking for in the exchange services. So I'm happy to answer any questions. 
And I, I'm especially excited about um, that the CSD will be managing and helping uh, with the facilitation of scheduling and program in this room. Um, Gina asked me about the random task of changing um, paper in the solar parking lot dispenser. Um, it's a random task, but it's a community service, and I'm so in favor of that. So, um, and I do believe that that falls within our power to operate community facilities. I'll check with council on that. Um, and parking districts. Yes, yeah. but it's not our parking district. So I, I think the community <laughs> facilities one is the one that we need to try to bank on. I've been there twice and it's been out of paper. Well, we're going to change that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I haven't been there twice. Yeah. I've been there more than twice. But no, twice I know. It's, it's, been it's an ongoing thing. And I, a little background on that is my, I, I asked, you know, general yeah, services, like, what does that entail? And I think it's about, about every five weeks it runs out of paper. And the new meters come in. It should be here in the next couple of weeks, I think. Um, so they're happy to do any training and then just I like operation manual So I think a part of this would just be like uh, In the formal legal lease thing we might not have to list the points of contact But I think that would be just helpful like to have like a binder with Absolutely. like Who the points of contact are and who are the board of directors and then going back to it came up earlier The county is still taking responsibility for the cleaning of the rooms and whatnot But as this idea of being a point of presence that's really helpful to be a official points of presence to be able to say you know Oh, the trash can's overflowing, and you know exactly who to call. And you, you don't have to do the trash can. You would just have to call the the point person at General Services to notify them if you know the cleaners hadn't been out or something. And then in general, just after before and after usage, which you guys already do, just like if there's trash on the floor, just help yeah. general basic upkeep of the rooms. So, so is the the parking lot is also our responsibility, mm -hmm. but just the building. Just, it, well, you'll have your, that office will be your guys' office, so obviously don't, like, have a kegger in there, <laughs> <laughs> ranger, <laughs> whatever, and then, and then this, just this room, and then, and that's it, so just this bottom floor, in fact, that nothing upstairs, you don't have to do anything upstairs, um, there's different tenants upstairs, so it's really just managing, like, you taking that responsibility from the, from the, informally, the parks district has been, managing that for us for two years for the county of which we are very grateful so and then and then the request to have sort of a formal i, I believe that that rodney might have a calendar like an outlook calendar just some sort of like at least that level of formality like an not an online reservation system necessarily it's a public accesses but just that something a calendar online that you know you or interns can access that it's very clear who's using the room when I had a question about um, the functionality of the a mailbox that's associated with that room. Because one of the big reasons all this is so awesome is now we actually have an address. Yeah. And do you know anything about uh, the mailing? Because I know the mailboxes are like right here and getting us a mail key. Um, I, I'm guessing that's a good question. I would bet that that comes with the room. So okay. I'll make a note of that. Okay, that's great. Do they, does it have a room number or something that it must goes? have a number it does i believe it's suite 101. may i ask as well about um our ada compliance in this building um and that basically maintaining that status of being compliant i do you know whose responsibility that would fall under just because even if talking about the parking lot there's not enough handicapped spots uh that's the county okay county general services i think skip Skip's been getting quotes that parking lot's gonna okay. come together hopefully sooner than later. I think Skip's been, been if general services has been working on that. Okay. Thanks. Cool. And Director Freeman. Um, so it will also be our job to determine that the parking meter is out of paper. Um, I think with the new, I'll, I'm going to check with um, general services and clarify how they know. I think he comes out. I mean, obviously it runs out. I think the new meter might be able, might be smart enough to be able to run, but I'll get clarification on that. How often do people usually change that paper? I was told that it's about every, it's supposed to be every five weeks, whether or not the, it is five or <laughs> five weeks. They're going to say five days. Yeah. Boy, I, I think. 
I don't know. I don't know if, yeah, I, like I said, I don't know if that's like when it goes out and that's reality when it's changed because there's probably not enough because all of us have examples of it being out of paper. <laughs> My guess is that it is really about every five weeks, depending on seasonality, of course, like, you know, during the school year. Um, and it's just not getting changed every five weeks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on, what was that? The other question was how to know the. Yeah, how to, how to know that the, the uh, papers out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I was involved in many, if not nearly all of those meetings about the total parking lot and the machine being out of paper constantly. Never in a million years did I think that it would somehow be, become my personal responsibility <laughs> <laughs> to literally change the paper. <laughs> in the Me machine. either, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is supposed to just like a lesson, right? Like, you know, don't complain about things unless you accidentally end up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and just for just to be clear, it'll be no one's personal responsibility. We'll find out the right protocol to carry it out as a district. Yeah. Um, and the reason that I brought this back here today was to keep everyone informed in the progress, but then to also um, authorize me to enter into a completed agreement after consulting our district council. And from where I think we're at, we do not anticipate that any of the service conditions are really going to change. Like I hope not. <laughs> no. Um, no, I, I would not advocate. I, I do not anticipate or expect them to change. I would not advocate for changes. Sure. Right. And um, as far as I, I spoke with Supervisor Hartman about this recently, and one of the services that she's mentioned both at the at different meetings and at the supervisor's budget uh, hearing was the general interest aggregation service that we provide the county. I'm not sure if that'll make it into here, but if it does, I. I'm not sure what does that mean? We're bringing together stakeholders and communicating regularly with okay. our supervisor. That's something that's been mentioned in the past. I'm not sure if that'll make it into this. I don't think so. I think this yeah. is a separate deal. Got it. Yeah. Cool. I'll move. Uh, it's written. Here. Yeah. The, so, did you uh, move to authorize President Bertrand to enter into an agreement upon consultation with District Legal Counsel? Second. Absolutely. So you moved to that. And let's just add some words. Um, well, we, we, we will understand with our understanding, because I don't think it has to be in the motion, that if there's significant changes, you're going to bring it back. Right. Yeah. I didn't catch it. Oh, here. It's the left. Here, I'll, I got it. Oh, oh it's, just it's, uh, it's on okay. right now. Oh, it's right shoot. Right okay. um, Command here. C, not Command X. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just add one. Because this is a, a directive to you or an authorization to you to enter into an agreement and the service exchanges. I love you too. Oh, I love you too. So uh, we have here a motion to authorize President Bertrand to enter into the final agreement with the County of Santa Barbara General Services Department upon consultation with District Legal Counsel. Mm -hmm. Is that friendly with? Uh, yep. Thurlow and who was our second? And Jordan? Yes. Any uh, public comment? Any more board discussion? Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Motion passes 6 0. Thanks, Gina. You're welcome. Thanks, Gina. Thank you. Okay, so now back to 2.2, Fund for Santa Barbara Emerging Needs Grant. Discuss applying to the Fund for Santa Barbara Emerging Needs Grant program. Discuss grant content and strategy. 
and discuss potential uses of grant funds if awarded up to $3,000 award. Director Chilo. Oh, is this my item? Yes. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll defer to uh, Jonathan. So, uh, a couple of formation committee meetings ago, George and I were you know, signed up to look into different opportunities for grants for the CSD. And I can't make it tomorrow because I have to go to Sacramento. I actually have to go to Sacramento in like an hour. Uh, but, and then George couldn't make it the rest of the week. So that's why we asked if we could have it on the agenda today for the board to talk about. Just so that we can get a move on and potentially applying for this as soon as possible. So it's uh, the fund for Santa Barbara has regular grant programs where you can get $10,000 twice a year. That's a whole application process. But if you couldn't apply during the regular cycle, you can apply for these emerging needs grants, which are $3,000, and therefore an emerging need. Uh, something that is unexpected. Uh, their exact language is projects needing immediate financial assistance that could not be foreseen. Um, so I went, I called up the fund, got the questionnaire from them, got the policy from them and everything. And you know, you got you have to kind of pick what you want to fundraise for or what you want to apply for the grant for. And there's a lot of different opportunities. And the reason I talked about translation services is that the Fund for Santa Barbara loves to fund things like that, things that promote inclusion. Um, but that's not necessarily the only thing that is able to be funded. Um, so what I kind of wanted to talk about is, one, is there interest in applying for the grant? And then if there is interest, uh, what the board believes would be a strategic use of applying. And not just strategic, like what would be good for the board, but also what would get the grant, because you have to balance both things. They wouldn't, like, when I first called Elena, uh, who's the person who manages this grant, and she's the one who kind of says yes or no, single-handedly, uh, I, I know that, uh, I mentioned, like, what, she's like, what are the, some of the costs that are going on? And this is very early May, I think, and, Back then, insurance was still number one. I'm like, oh, you know, insurance is one of the things. And she said, absolutely not on insurance. So it can't be something like that. Uh, so that one's out. But I think, you know, translation services, office supplies, operations, like, they want to really support the <coughs> things that really benefit the community. So however you can frame getting this grant, that would help, you know, the CSD benefit the community. Which so more good. towards service delivery? Yeah, I mean, it, more towards service delivery, but you could frame certain things as service delivery. Um, so that's yeah. basically, George, do you want to say anything? Well, I was just kind of, I was sitting here trying to think because, yeah, I think that the niche that we could say is an emerging need and that is a communication system that allows the community to communicate with us and to essentially create some kind of, you know, interactivity where we're now creating a new line of communication for the community. Um, so to me, that's to put in whatever the internet, yeah. phone system, communication system, and at the same time couch it in kind of what Gina was saying, which is one of our one of the things that we're going to be expected to do is to aggregate community concerns and be a conduit along with that office. So in my mind that kind of fits it more than if we just said buy computers yeah. or yeah. I well, can I just say one more thing off of that? Uh, that's I I think that's the best uh, thing to apply for and I had this thought earlier today it's because it's the one of the grants like provisions is uh, financial assistance for something that could not be foreseen and the county giving us the office and the community room to manage could not have been foreseen uh, up until like a month ago so I think that helps us also justify that now we have this new thing about to go we need some money to help make it happen uh, Director Freeman and then Director Brandt. Um, so for, uh, first of all, Cute, um, I really like the translation uh, services um, idea. Um, I also, I really like this idea. My one concern is is that unless we, this can be included in the grant possibility, um, although this is, seems like a small amount of money, um, is that we currently don't have stable 
hierarchical staff. Uh, and uh, I mean, when I say stable, it's, it's in like the, the internship program cycles. And so we have this, this issue right now where we almost, we have like, if we just set up a system to communicate with us, we're almost certainly going to end up in some horrible brown axe snafu almost immediately. It's as if, like, for example, we set up a Facebook page where people could send messages and they went to all of us and then we ended up with like, um, where, where there's just going to be communication between us somehow. I mean, if, there was, if, if instead we had that buffer where, for example, at the Park District, if the Park District did this and then Rodney got all those messages, responded to any of them that were relevant, and then brought a report to the board on feedback from the public, and then the board could, like, there was like that, that buffer, it would work really well. And I don't know if that's something that we could essentially budget for a buffer in the grant, or if that's something that maybe we just would need to wait on building something like that until such time as we actually have a general manager that could actually. So we're talking about a general manager again. Yeah, we're, we're just, it's, it's general manager so, so is really crucial for us. Jerry, I can Jerry. respond. So this grant is right now, like you'd get it within a week. Yeah, There's also the fall grant that we could apply for. Well, that's, that's nice. Like, so and that's 10000 so. Do we just have to pick one thing, or can we say we have a series of emerging needs? Because we're the CSD, and everything is a new <laughs> emerging need every time I come need. to a meeting. Yeah. Yeah. You could, but you want to <laughs> ask for yeah. what What do you want this 3000 to fund? Like, you give them a budget, you say, this is what our operational like organizations budget is this is what we this is the project that we'd like you to help fund this is the budget for that project could you fund 3000 of it so the project could be all 3000 or but the, it's on a specific basis like you can't just say our budget's 30000 help us fill in that last hole that what do you think the that 10000 grant you can do with that what do you think then like in your opinion will people they'll bite with more, like what areas specifically, so that we can redirect this conversation to a specific. I think what George mentioned, and just like the making, helping the CSD become a point of contact for the community, I think that's good too. Uh, like community engagement in some way, and that's what managing this and having the office would be. And I think you could do half translation, half that. I mean, translation is like part of that, if people were interested in that. Or you could save the translation for the $10,000 grant. I mean, it's up to you all, but I think what, you know, running this room, like the $3,000 to help, however that works out, running this room in the office is what we probably get the money for. So right, right. Right. Yeah, so, well, I, I, I like this idea, and I, I think it sounds really interesting, to this idea of some sort of a communication service, but I've, I think I'd, it'd be good to have it a little more fleshed out because I think I'm a little confused on what exactly it is. is this it's a telephone. <laughs> oh, it's just it's a telephone? Okay. With an answering machine. Okay, well, that's a little bit different than what I thought it was, and I think well, there might have been some confusion. I mean, we're applying like for a the, grant. <laughs> so it's a communication yeah, system. Yeah, okay. But, well, I mean, we just did seriously. allocate some money in the budget for yeah. that, is so well, what yeah, I'm yeah, trying to get trying, at. Yeah, but we're trying to backfill. That's part of what we're doing. Oh, I agree 100%. I just had another item that could be backfilled, which is some sort of a, either a key management system or an electronic key I'm thing. I'm all about it. $1,500 new doors. I don't, I don't <laughs> think I don't know if it's new the phone of Santa Barbara's not going to bite on that one. Would, could but you think they would buy it on paying our phone bill? No, we're, we're not doing a, we don't have a phone. You have to set up a phone system, especially if we're in office, we have to have an office phone. It's not like getting T-Mobile, you know? We have to have like- No, we still pay Cox for the phone. Right? Yeah, but that's right. actually buying phone the technology and internet itself. And all of that for $3,000. Well, but I, you're saying that you think that they would rather pay because for that Because what we're, what we're gonna pitch this as is this is a whole new way for the community to communicate with us, mm -hmm. and we're the grassroots governing board um, if if we're doing our job, this fosters democracy at its most fundamental level, which is it allows people access to us. Yeah. And uh, we're not going to get flooded with phone calls, I don't think. Oh, no, I don't think so either. And I think that this is something that we definitely need to do. I'm just still not convinced that that's a better thing to apply for, and that's a better sell. Yeah, than key locks. Well, here's why. First, the first question they're going to ask is, whose building is that? Hmm. And we're going to say, well, that's a county building. And why they're going to say, oh. so why are we spending grassroots organizing money on helping fix up a county office building? Mm -hmm. uh, that's not to say that we're not going to have to put some nice uh, window dressing on this one. But maybe, I mean, the other piece of it is they're going to give us feedback, right? 
And they might just, well, no. Yeah. It's, it's, when's the deadline? There's no deadline for this one. Yeah. It's whenever we apply. I but we know in a week. Yeah, I mean, or you go ahead first. I think that obviously, like, communication has been a major issue for us, and we've been back and forth a lot about this. So I think that communication makes a lot of sense in general, too, as in a really pressing need. It really is an emerging need, as we've come to discover over the past couple of weeks. So it's not just something like, I think it's, a good thing to apply to. And I think just it more comes down to verbiage than just saying, yo, pay our Wi-Fi bill, you know? Oh, no, I agree with 100%. And I, I'm totally supportive. Can, after can I also add to, to, say. to that that we need this outlook, which Gina just barely brushed upon, but we really need to get something up that's going to manage. Because I, my sense is that Rodney is just going to hand this to us. And, and he we're going to need some work. kind of communication, I don't know, that manages yeah. Outlook. I mean, Google Calendar works um, very well, mm -hmm. but I, when I think of Outlook, I think an, er, in the future we are going to need to move towards having actual district emails through which our constituents can interact with us. Um, can so all that fall under that direction? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So I am in, in favor and totally supportive of um, going the communications route on this. Um, but I'm also in favor of exploring um, the emerging need of a stipend for someone to carry out the will of the board and connect with our community and do community engagement and work to uh, move forward these emerging policies that we're putting in to change um, the status quo in Isla Vista. Because I know we went to the workshop a few months ago, Spencer and I, That's right. and their big thing was change not charity and enabling systemic change. And I think that during this crucial time where we're just emerging, one of the biggest um, changes, even though it's funding a stipend, is funding someone who can actually go and carry out and build a foundation that's been called for to create change. Bob, and, Bob, Bob had his hand up. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say, it, it sounds like where George was talking about this, you know, having this Outlook ca calendar. My first thought when we talked about getting this <coughs> calendar from Rodney is, well, who's using the room? How are they, you know, putting it out there to the community that are rooms available? How are they, they uh, using this resource to promote that community interest? I think they're just yeah, because standing because back and managing the keys yeah. rather than us being the communication force to say, hey, we can organize in this community meeting room and this is there for you and here are the people that are using it and this is how they're using it. And, oh, and yeah. that, that I don't see right now. So I, I see that as a great sell point to com communicate and leverage this room, which is the jumping off point to that room, you know, to that building over there. Right. Director Freeman and then Director Brown. So if, if we're using the grant in order to, for example, get us a telephone, um, I, at, at, when the grant runs out, will we have money to continue paying for the same phone number for the telephone? Like, and at that point, if I were the granting body, I might be asking the question, of like, so you're, you're just asking us to pay for some period of time for this program? Is it, is it really systemic change, or is it, or is it just a, a temporary charity in that way? Um, it's. I have other questions. Oh, well, I was just going to have a direct response, and then you can go, Jonathan. Um, but what I was going to say is I thought about that, too, and why I was supportive of exploring the idea of, like, a stipend for um, a limited general manager type role is because that's actually something where they can say, oh, well, you already have someone who can pay for this, then why are you asking us? But we know that the university is not willing to pay for, and for good reason. I'm not saying the university. Um, but in, in our negotiations thus far, um, that's not something that um, money of the University of California seems that it can go towards. Um, so with that, we could actually say our biggest funding source right now, even though they're helping us out in so many ways, actually can't pay for that. Uh, is it to this point directly? Because we had grant. To this point directly, cool. which is, um, I think we need a phone system next week. Okay. I think that we can hold off, and, and certainly what I'm hearing, and this would be helpful if I'm going out there, because I just drew up a list of the foundations that I'm going to start calling on, is to hear the board say, this is our very next priority, which is, 
But I do think the formation committee needs to do some work to figure out 4,000, 5,000, if we go and ask the Santa Barbara Foundation for $5,000 emergency grant to hire, they might just do it. But then they're going to want us to hire somebody right away for $5,000. Yeah. And if it's, so I, I don't know, that's, I think we need a phone system. Great point. Jonathan and then Spencer. Uh, and then so Jay, you were saying something about like, what's the point of the 3,000 if it's only for the oh. one year that we probably get. I mean, it is a emerging need grant. Like I think it, you can't really buy phone service just once. Like it, it, you, know, you buy it for the whole year, usually a year, sign the contract, paying it in 12 month periods, but you pay for the whole year. So I think that works within the grant because you can't do the work you're supposed to do without internet and phone. Um, in terms of, is that all your, then you said something about a general manager, I, I forgot. The um, I was about change. to ask a question, I was, I was talking about this systemic change and like that, that in a way that it's, it's, it's like a, Temporarily floating something as opposed to. Well, it is the emerging needs grant. So that's because okay. like, that's for if you're an organization that had something come up, like now we are responsible for this, this came up, uh, we need help to make it happen. So the help our project is this you know, community relations and community room that we're going to start getting going. And we need phone and we need internet to do that. No. I think that's a just. I think that's a valid justification. Right. And I also think a stipend for someone to make it happen is also a valid justification. Is, you, know, you have only a few thousand dollars though, so how much of that do you want to eat? It like, it's not unlimited money, but it looks you can do it like two thousand of communication, a thousand for something else. And maybe when we'd, when we said that I said something with general manager much earlier when I had said maybe there's a way to use part of this grant in order to provide that buffering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then you yeah. could. Yeah. Your response to that? That's that's oh, to like buy out the some buffer. of the stipend allocation in the budget. Oh, I wasn't. So I, when I said it, I didn't say general manager. I was talking about just no, well, it could be general manager, some kind of. I mean, I'm just like if we can't get a telephone, who's going to answer? I feel it? Like it, well, we have uh, director Brent and then uh, director Jordan. Mm -hmm. I well, I was just going to say I I think uh, we're kind of moving in the right direction, and that direction is towards um, things that pertain to the regular operation both of our office and of the management of this room that are in the immediate. And I'm in a grill with George that Wi-Fi slash telephone service is basically the first piece of that. And so I, I, I think that if, if we can get a, a committee together to write or a director to write this grant and to and we can agree that those are two things that we want included on that. Um, like, or those are the first two things. Because I also think it would be valuable, and I think we could be able to pitch it and say that uh, we, we have this room that we're going to have to start managing come July 3rd, and we need someone to do some interim management of the key system that that could fly. Yeah, and you don't also have to spend the money, like, immediately. Get it in a week, and then we have like three, four weeks to like get it situated to spend. But yeah, that's right. Uh, Director Jordan, I just feel like we're really overcomplicating this. I just feel like we obviously have like a really long list of things that need to get done, but like to like we should just look at the most pressing, and we have identified that a general manager is a really pressing need. But I think that if we're making a pitch for too many items, it's not gonna it's not gonna stick the same way as like laying a concrete foundation that we need a simple way to communicate with our constituents. And I think that like we should be focusing more on who's gonna actually like write the verbiage than the actual like I don't know. Do you guys all feel like this? What it, what the purpose of this money would be towards communication at this point? I mean, yeah. Let's see. Do we have consensus that, that we, we do want to go towards that? I mean, I'm definitely there. I Sounds like you're there. Good. George is there. Jay, are you no. there? You're not there. Bob, are you? I'm I'm leaning towards it. it if the communication infrastructure we're going to invest in helps us manage this room optimally, like we've agreed to here, and it also says, hey, you don't get phone and you don't get internet, so we know we need to get that to manage this room. It's a new need. I, I think it's I think it fits, it's and I think too. it's a great use of three thousand dollars to make this work. Yeah. I mean, 
I think it's really important that we manage this room well and we leverage this room with the community. Right. Excellent. And uh, Spencer, are you just getting interest right now? You're yes, I, will, I would prefer that it be part of a package which is these are the emerging needs associated with having to manage this room. We yeah. have a yeah, you have to ask it for a project it's and not like for the district, so the project is operationalizing this. And it's service right. delivery, yeah. so I, I like it. Yeah. Right. And um, perhaps as a way to move forward on this, um, if there's some direction that wants to be given, maybe for me and Director Thurlow to collaborate on this. You've already written it. So I haven't written this part of it. So there's a lot of boilerplate ish right. stuff like what is the CSD and what. You know, why didn't you apply during the regular cycle? I've like filled out, George and I like got it done. So there's only the what are you applying for portion that we left blank because cool. this is the part of it. But yeah. Well, we can't direct him to do it. Okay. Um, so, so one of the two of us, um, I can't, uh, I'm just going to be off the grid until next Monday. Okay. So, um, but in the meantime, we were going to try and have an appointment with Marcus while we're still trying, yeah. Oh, I, and that was me. Huh? Oh, well, I called him and left two messages. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. That's right. I told email. you I have an I have an angle on Marcus. So that's going to be next week, anyways. Okay, so so we should meet with Marcus first. Marcus is the executive director, of the, yeah. And um, and ultimately, one of the two decision makers. Should we have this then ready by the July seventh meeting to then? have something for the board to approve and then we apply like the next day. Why don't you, can yeah. you just, can you guys just approve it and send it in without us doing that stuff? Yeah, did you want this to come back to the board? Yes. I don't know if they have to July 7th. Okay, then right, I don't we're going to try, about it. we want to get that we'll last vote do that. down there. Yeah, can so. we talk about this real quick? What, what did you, what ex exactly would you like to see out of this, Jay, instead? My, my, my issue is that I don't want to end up in some kind of weird situation where we spent money towards something that I don't see how operationally we can use in a legal way. And so like I think about, well, we're going to get just a phone. And I think, who is going to either check the messages on the phone or answer the phone? And if it's any of us, I don't think that's okay. We have interns still? Have and so, and so then it's a matter of, and, and so then, then I, I think about how are we going to, at the end of the summer, transition to that or something. Like that. And so it's just like, if you've got a plan for it, and you want to describe that plan for it, but what it sounded like is, is it was going to be a way for it to communicate with us. As like but, the, but the alternative is we have no phone. Yeah. We have no internet. We have no contact with the outside world. And it, and it's kind of like you're a government agency, and I can't. I can't talk to you. I think that if it comes down to to us having concerns about the communications about district operations getting across between too many people, and it's a Brown Act issue, then we just delegate it to one person and that would essentially be the board president. And then of course, like remember that we do have interns that serve underneath him. He has an intern. I will have an intern, and you will have an intern as well. So, 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 if, we're, so if we're instead saying that we're going to obtain a phone such that people can call and leave a message for Ethan, I would be okay with that. But, yeah, but then it's, are, like you guys are calling okay on the cell phone. You know? Wait, so what is the, I don't see the, it's a distinction without a difference to me. Well, well, wait a second. When I said that, Ethan was like, "No." And no. Then because, there was like a question well, about the answer. Well, I think it goes beyond that. It goes getting an internet address and then having somebody responsible to refer, re, you know, to process those internet, those those emails, and whether it be Ethan or an intern or how we handle that. Right. I got to develop that procedure. But, well, we and a, but we need six small bites. If we take the whole, if we're looking at this as like a holistic, long term, what are we going to do in? Two years, how are we going to transition to, you I know? Mean two years. I was only talking about two and a half months. Okay. Well, I'm hoping that someone will consider a motion to direct the president and Director Thurlow to prepare a recommended grant application to improve <coughs> district communications with constituents. Is there anyone interested? I'll in move that? that. Okay. Moved by guys. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. And, and are we going to bring that back to the July 9th meeting? No. July 7th, no. I we are bringing July back. 7th. You're bringing back the whole. It's neither the, the, the completed it's July 11th would be yeah, the next July. July. Do, oh, do we by need the way, that gets the vote for me if you bring it back, because I'll vote for yes that you should do it, like work on it. Yeah, we want to bring it back. Okay, so my question is, is yep. like, you know, you yeah, said there isn't a back. deadline. I appreciate that. I know you said there isn't a deadline. So then let's, can we just talk about the timeline then if we're taking what? 
a week and a, uh, two weeks to compose, and then we have um, then we apply, and then where's the lag time there? Just because if we are getting this money from from the county sooner than that, I'm just worried about the timeline being stretched out with the duration of our meetings. Well, you, if you apply, if you approve it on the 11th, and we just send it in that night, then we get the money, or we know about getting the money on the 19th or 20th of July. Okay, and then when would we have access to this room officially? The start of the month. So the first. And we'll absolutely have that as a discussion item at our first meeting. Um, and. I'm just thinking though, if we get the grant in, it, let's say theoretically, if we get the grant in sooner than that, assuming that that's just basic information about what is the CSD and what do you want, basically. Well, that's done. I so did that part. What we need to now do is the proposal for this funding. So if we were to submit that <coughs> proposal earlier, what would the timeline look like? Uh, you can't get it back to us until 11. Yeah, because we have to review it before we, we submit it. So we can't do like a special meeting together? Well, and I'll also say that I, I anticipate that we're going to have to have a special meeting between now and the 11th to deal with another issue. And so, so if we could get it into that special meeting, and then we would be able to approve it faster and therefore have our internet and phone faster for the room to be accessible to people. I would be okay with that. I'm if thinking that it's okay just not that. realistic to get it a month later because the room's going to be unavailable. Sure. No, I understand. So what I have here for this motion is direct President Bertrand and Director Thurlow to prepare recommendations for a grant application for resources to improve communication between the district and constituents at the next meeting of the Board of Directors. Is that friendly? Next meeting. Friendly. Um, I would maybe throw in something about uh, like, like make this a service to the community. Like, I don't know how I, I should have come up with something to say. Uh, <laughs> to improve communication and provide the community room as a service to the community. Facilitate the use of the community yeah. room as a community resource. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Because I think that specifically will really tug at their wallet. Just myself. I, that's So, um, for a grant application for resources to improve communications between the district and constituents and to expand the community's use of the community room at the next board meeting of the board of directors, at the next meeting of the board of directors. That's good with um, the maker who was, who, who made this Me. I mean, Guys, you made the, I was second friendly. Okay. I don't know if we got the chance to say it, but thank you, George and Jonathan, for bringing this yeah, to your attention. Yeah, thank you. And doing the legwork. Okay. Uh, any public comment? And I'll just read it one more time because it's wordy, but direct President Bertrand and Director Thurlow to prepare recommendations for a grant application for resources to improve communication between the district and constituents and to expand the community's use of the community room at the next meeting of the board of directors. Okay. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Motion passes 6-0. Um, and that concludes our business for tonight. Uh, the next regular meeting of the Board of Directors will take place on July 11th. Look out for notice for any special meetings. Is there a motion to adjourn? I have a quick announcement first. Uh, it's just about committee meetings. So Director Freeman brought it to my attention that while uh, there was an intention on the formation committees ha they have to schedule a meeting for tomorrow, um, that meeting was noticed as, um, as the 30th, which is... Um, Looking at my calendar, which is a Friday instead. <coughs> Director Thurlow, I know you're out of town on that date. Um, I just want to use this opportunity to ask the committee. I'm flying on that date. You're flying on that date, so I'll put up a cancellation notice. Um, there's, there's still the opportunity to schedule a, 
a, a meeting, a special meeting on the Wednesday or Thursday. Are you in town on Wednesday or Thursday? Fifth and sixth. Uh, no, this week. No. No. See? Okay. As this in like Wednesday and Thursday. Tomorrow. No. Okay. But two days this is not for our meeting. No, for us. So, yeah. Okay. Are you in following town? week? I'm, I'm I, I, you know, I, I don't want to have a meeting with without you, but unfortunately, I think there's well, a really should, pressing issue yeah. that we need so to speak about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I couldn't meet. And I, I encourage you so to I'll figure out the date that you can okay. meet. Okay, will do. I meeting. just wanted okay. to announce it. Thank you. Um, and is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay. Uh, Director Brandt moved to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Thurlow. All right. Any public comment? Bye, guys. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Motion passes 6 0. We stand adjourned at 8 50 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. This was a fun one.